It is now time for your main event. Welcome to the World Arm Wrestling League. We've got excitement. What a match. It will be thunder and lightning. This is epic. This is history. And we welcome you to Atlanta, Georgia, championship night here at the WAL. It's WAL 506, the final event in the 2019 season. We're here at Turner Studios in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. WAL 506 Atlanta, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, the official sports bar of the World Arm Wrestling League. So good to have you with us here on BR Live. An incredible turnout to watch championship night here from Atlanta. Two champions will be crowned, two hammers are on the line, a big night indeed. My name is Ben Holden, thrilled to be joined by my broadcast partner, former three-time world champ, Neil Pickup. Neil, great to see you again and be a part of this with you for the second year. Where's your excitement level at, my friend? You know, my excitement level is right at the top of that hill on the roller coaster. I can tell you this, these guys are ready to rip the roof off. We got some boys and girls back there ready to rip people's arms off. It is going down tonight right here. Stay tuned, guys. It certainly is. I mentioned two hammers are on the line. There they are. Two men will walk away with those. We've got Jerry Cataret taking on the reigning hammer holder, the monster Michael Todd, and Rob Vigeon Jr. He's the reigning hammer holder against the Bama Bull, Justin Bishop. This card is thick with talent. We've already had controversy and upsets before it starts, and you can see it there. We get underway with Katowski, Harris, Justin Bishop, the underdog, but he has nothing to lose against the dominant champion in Rob Vigeon Jr. Then, it's a match that I am bristling from head to toe about. The two top female arm wrestlers on earth are right here and ready to get on it tonight. Then, as I say to my wife when I got out of that bottom button on my jeans, it's time to roll out the big lads. <laughs> He's got a way with words, doesn't he, folks? For those of you that are new to the WAL, let's get you first and up to speed on the rules of the game. The referee begins the match by centering the competitor's hands on the table. The hands must be level, close, and tightly set. If their grip slips, they will be placed in the strap. During the match, the arm wrestlers must keep their elbow on the pad at all times. To win the match, a competitor must touch his opponent's hand or wrist to the pad or break the plane of the pin line. Three fouls is a loss. All right, so there are the rules of the game. You see our referee team, our head referee, none better than Bart Wood. Jen Wood will assist, and Badger Drews, he's in here tonight, Neil. They make up our officiating team. So much experience there, Ben. Obviously, Bart, that steady pair of hands. He's assisted by his wife. And Badger Drews, former top-class arm wrestler himself, he's got the gray hairs from years of grinding this game. He knows it inside out. Great addition to the team. No question about it. So let's take a look at the two men that we'll pull here first. This was supposed to be for a hammer. Tony Katowski could not get down to weight. He was putting too much strain on his body, was at a risk health-wise, so it will not be for the hammer, but it still should be an outstanding match. Absolutely, Ben. I mean, Tony Katowski has taken the, the fact that he couldn't make weight really hard. He went out on social media apologizing last night. Feels like he's let himself and everybody who followed him down. But listen, let's not get twisted here. This is about arm wrestling. It's about putting arms on pads. There's maybe five pounds of difference in these guys and they want it bad. So don't worry about any titles. These guys didn't come just for hammers. They didn't come just for money. They came to be the man. They did, they came for pride and they came to win indeed. Let's uh, go at home, what do you say, with Tony Katowski. Let's get to know him a little bit better. I am Tony Katowski. 
I pull the 165 pound weight class. I belong to Rudolph Fire Department. For me to be a part of something that can actually help people is something I've always wanted to do. The rewarding side of it, if you can save somebody else's life, is makes it worthwhile. I'm just a volunteer. EMS and the firefighters are the full-time guys. They see this stuff every single day. I have all the respect in the world for them. All right, Neil, and it was back in 2016 that Tony won both hammers yes, in Las sir. Vegas. Yes, he did. Tony never lost a lightweight title, and for that reason, many people believe, including himself, that he is the champion. Can he rip it from the grasp of this man? Well, Sam Harris is this man. He won it here last year. What do you say we get to know Sam Harris a little bit better? Running a hammer, nailing nails, you know, putting screws in, lifting metal, squeezing tin snips every day. It's all me working my hands. So strong hand and wrist, that would be the key for me. All the power starts at your hand and then it just goes through the rest of your body. It kind of mimics the strap, just hold it. Without separating. That's my secret very few people know about. All right, Neil, let's take a look now at the ratings card between these two men. What do you make of it? You know what? We can throw a lot of that out of the window because there's so many variables. Tony Katowski is the man with the raw horsepower. On the opposite side of that spectrum, Sam Harris has the speed. Many people think that it's all about Tony's size and strength, but let me tell you, this is a game of levers, it's a game of strategy, and it's a game of confidence. Sam Harris has been swaggering around this place today. He is a very confident young man, and we'll see how much the weight cut has taken out of Katowski. We will, and we'll get into that as we move along. And if it's on the internet, it's gotta be true, right? I kid. Instagram fan poll, what do you make of this? You know what? I told you earlier on that a lot of people have got a lot of faith in Tony Katowski. He's outspoken, he's confident, he looks like an animal, and he never lost the hammers. People saw that, they remember that, they can't wait for this, and he comes in as favorite. Yes, indeed, looking forward to it. And mention the great crowd, you can see it behind us. Jason Zone Fisher, he's always in the zone. Jason, what's the zone like down there now, my friend? I am in the zone right now, Ben. I am here in the middle of all the fans, all the excitement. I'm here with James and Aaron. It's their first arm wrestling match ever. A lot of people, it's their first time, and they picked a good night for their first ever arm wrestling match to attend because it's championship night. Which match are you most excited about? All of them? All of them, man. Like, they're all going to be great. I know. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to get this night started. Ben, let's get the show on the road. Let's do it. No doubt about it. The fans are ready. We know that. We're ready. The competitors are ready. Let's get to our pit announcer, Justin Roberts, for the introductions. Get ready to start this night off with a bang. The following is a non-title, best of five, lightweight match. Introducing to the pit first, he stands at 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighed in at 174 pounds with a record of 28 wins and 9 losses. Competing out of Junction City, Wisconsin, he is a two-time WAL lightweight champion. This is Iron Man, Tony Kitowski. Nice to see Justin Roberts there using a line that I used on my wife when I hired that jacuzzi in Vegas. Let's get this thing off with a bang. Back to business, Tony Katowski, the Iron Man, is in the house. Yes, Wisconsin's he finest, Ben. He has got the weaponry. Look at the arms on this fella. He may have missed weight, but does he look like he's lacking confidence? And his opponent. He stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 172 pounds with an impressive record of 29 wins and 7 losses. Competing out of New Paris, Pennsylvania, one of the young guns of the WAL who defended his title in a brutal battle at WAL 501. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the WAL lightweight champion, Sam Harris. Here we go, the reigning and defending lightweight champion of the world is about to enter the arena and they say the fight sports is about confidence. Well, this young man projects, he's walking in here tonight with an incredible air of confidence, like he's got a third leg that you don't know about and he might just have it. 
He's burst out of the scene the last couple of years. Justin mentioned he had the one event early this year, a classic comeback. Jeff Hale had him down, and he came back to win 3-2. He certainly did, mate, and I can tell you this. Jeff Hale also said that Sam Harris has got the World Arm Wrestling League format dialed in. As the money hits the table, he's got to back that up against a serious threat now in Tony Katowski. Here's to Parkwood. Let's go. All the talk, all the controversy, all that hype, it all means nothing. It comes down to this. Down, square your shoulders. Best this, of five. This first start, pivotal. Absolutely down, pivotal. The moment down, these down, hands touch, millions more. of messages so yes, are received equal. by each athlete. Down a little more, Sam. Beginning to read Down. their opponent's strategy, right where they Close want to be. Thumbs. And we'll Doug learn Tony's so way. much from this first start. Bart just right setting there, the guys. Right there, I got to see thumb knuckle. At 30 Close to get hands. gripped up. Go. Big drive, and I can tell you this, the yeah. read on that was one of two things. Either Sam Harris was purely looking yeah. for the strap, or Katowski's wrist is exactly as advertised. Okay, don't move. Iron. It did don't not yeah. move. Right here. Personally? I think it's the former. I think Sam Harris wants the strap. Mm -hmm. I think he needs to be Same elusive, and he's looking to try to use that strap to strengthen his wrist. He'll try and gap the match, move his thumb back. Has he got enough horsepower? I don't know. Katowski has operated at middleweight for a couple of seasons. Okay, right he's used to that higher level of power. Here we go. Close your thumbs. First pull of the night from the strap, Neil. Massively important then. Go! On the way we go! Massive drive, and look at the back pressure from Harris. He's got the brakes on, but Katowski, just too much horsepower. Wow! The Iron Man. I am Iron Man. Tony Katowski took away the acid weapon seconds. of Sam Harris. Yes, he did. 90 seconds between pulls, and a 1 0 lead for Tony Katowski. Let's have a look at this on the replay. Look at the coiling position of Harris. A few adjustments, but it was the side pressure from Katowski that was the difference maker. But let's have a check on reality for a moment. Is this the first time we've seen Sam Harris go down? No. Take a look in the other corner now, and the Bishop boys advising Katowski. Yeah. Sam Harris, I mean, certainly he's got emotion, Neil, but he doesn't sh he doesn't ever show it in the times I've seen him pull. No, he's a horizontal young man. This guy's super relaxed. He's in a good place. And this is a long, long way from over. We saw him go down 2-0 yes. against Jeff Hale, who's a very talented arm wrestler. 25 seconds, gentlemen. Sam got his family in the corner there. He does. Girlfriend is here as well. If you look at the corner there of Katowski, he's being given advice by one of the Bishop boys. Yes, Justin's brother, his wife there in the hat. Both these men are absolutely relaxed. Neither one of them panicking at this stage, just thinking That's about it. what happened That's and time. thinking about those Switch minor sides, adjustments yeah. that are required. Both men have got that in their arsenal. What I would say is that Sam Harris will be concerned about the setup. He'll want to create more of an opportunity to move. He needs to create distance in which to move because if he starts in any kind of static position, he clearly hasn't got the Come horsepower down, advantage. That question has been answered at this stage. Yeah, so what he needs way. to do is create room and move down. into that room. Or one inch will do it, down. and it'll make all the difference in the world. If Close he can get the wrist, he can get the pin. Keep one nothing Keep lead open. for Tony Katowski here in the best of five. Close your hands. Go! On the way we go, and he balls his hand up. Yeah, Sam Harris isn't even hanging on. He's looking for the strap. He yes, he is. the strap. Yep, strap. and he got it. Now, interestingly there, Tony Katowski, ah! because he's felt the fact that he's the stronger man, yep. was happy to try and hang on to go, Sam. Sam. You know what? That's an, an emotional reaction, and he doesn't want to do that. You'll see it on the replay. Watch Katowski. Look okay. at the frustration no on his face, here. and he tries to hang on to Sam. He wants to forget about that. Let him go. Yeah. The strap doesn't lie. Get tied to the man, and when you've got the anchor point, that's the time to accelerate.
can't just put my thumb down. Signs in the house tonight. Yeah, Uncle God. Sam. Oh, I got to come this way. Creative signage in the audience tonight here at Turner Studio here in Atlanta. Hugely important round for Sam Harris, this. Hugely important. Yeah, I got buckle. Yes. He needs to find a foothold in this match. Same venue last now, year. Pivotally there, could you hear what was being said? Square up. Sam saying, looser, looser. Tony saying, tighten that down, close tighten your that down. He wants it close. Sam, Stay open. as I said, close he wants the hands. gap. He wants the space to move into. And he hasn't really found it there. He's in trouble. Katowski trying to force it, needs to be patient because Sam will post the all. Oh, that's a great transition. Katowski with a superb transition. Wow. He moves to the top row. He's good bust by wrist back. He's wrist up bust the back. Tony Katowski showing some emotion. He told us this morning, Neil, he said he didn't want to let people down after what he had to go through and not being able to make the weight. So far, he's not letting anyone down. Well, I can tell you this, he didn't let himself down Correct. technically there, because that was a wonderful, sweetly timed transition. Yep. Really sweetly timed. Look at this on the replay. He let Sam Harris, oh, we're going to see the emotional replay there. Look at that, he yes. wanted that. Bad. Wow, did he. Now look at this, he waited, we're a little coming in a little late there actually. What he did was wait for Sam Harris to be fully committed. We're seeing it after the action point there, it's a shame, I would have liked to see that a couple of seconds earlier, Sam Harris was stretched out, Tony waited for the commitment till he was absolutely on the red line, and as Sam reacted, he switched position, beautifully timed reversal by Tony Katowski, A1 arm wrestling from the Ironman. Big time. Into the corners, working that arm of Sam Harris. He's got to win the next one, or Katowski will take it in a clean sweep. Yeah, inflated arm there of Tony Katowski. He worked for that one, but I'll tell you this, Sam Harris now is in a very, very challenging spot. I know that sounds obvious, but he's been down 2-0 before, yes. but he's been down in a situation where he was pulling a man who didn't have the options that Katowski's got. Right. Tony has beaten him in two different positions, in two different ways. He's shown that he's got that countering defensive okay, capability. Three, He's really wrestling well. Sam needs to dramatically change the manner in which he's addressing this match. How does he do that? He can mind? do that in a number of ways, but what he does okay. have to do is walk into the fire. He's got to do something that Katowski doesn't expect off the first inch. Close your tongue. Crack him hard to the Stay side. Right here. Stay he can't go Stay in the same way. He can't just going. go backwards. Close your hands. That dog no. won't hunt. No Let it go. One foul. He's got to unleash the thing, and he's got to run into the fire. Foul call there on Sam Harris. Yeah. Sam needs to just calm down, Time. and he needs Going to throw to a punch yes. that he doesn't usually throw. Tony is reading everything else. He can see where the power's coming from. And you know what? That's the hardest thing in the world to do when your title is on the line. We'll see how much Sam Harris has matured here. Time had expired, so Bartwood calls for the strap. You got 30 seconds to get gripped up. You get a great look at this beautiful venue and an incredible crowd that has turned out here on championship yep. night here in yep. right 2019, now. WAL 506. Someone on my side. Okay. pulling me over okay. there, man. I'm gonna, I'll wrestle a lot of mind games going please on now. Do. Oh, yeah. Keep your thumb open, please. Yep. He's lifting his elbow. That's tight. It's no. Keep your thumb open. Who's the ref? Let's go. Let's go. Let's Hands on the peg. Go. Square up. A lot of maturity in this close match shown by Katowski. Yeah. He'll want to close yeah. that space close down. Sam climbing back, he did it, he bumped to the side half. Now that's a much better move from Sam Harris. He did exactly what he needed to do. And from there, he has something. Believe me, Harris has something. And he got it, there it is. Sam Harris runs through the machine gun fire. And what a time to do it. 5.06, your title's on the line. Run, Rabbit. Hit the guy where he doesn't expect you. If you've been going to the chin, pick the body. Pick the body, because it hurts a man. Stays alive, does Harris. Now 2-1 as we look back here, Neil. Wow, exactly what he needed to do. Crack him to the side. One inch is a mile in the sport of arm wrestling. Whether he wins or loses, magnificent performance from that young man. Well done, Sam Harris. Well done. He won the hammer here last year in 406. No hammer on the line tonight. So we've told you, Tony Katowski was two and a half pounds away from making weight. 
Had to lose 18 pounds. Said he was feeling it, the kidneys, his eyes. Got to be careful. Your health is way more important than anything. A hundred percent, mate. Tony, I saw him on Tuesday morning at the hotel, <laughs> yeah. and the guy looked like he'd been dug up. Absolutely terrible condition. And he's got his wife there. He's yeah. got a young, young kids at home. This, at the end of the day, is an arm wrestling match. There's only so far you want to go. Yeah, he has four kids, family man, Sam Harris, a young daughter. Hey. Sam Harris trying to make the comeback again, yeah, yeah. down 2 nothing. I'll tell you what it is, mate. Sam Harris, his confidence level has just hit a new high. Yep. Look at the face on that young man, can see it. reinvigorated. So Bart Woods summons him back to the table. Tony Katowski trying to put it away in four. Harris trying to even it and force a decisive fifth pull. You know what? I had spoke to Sam literally 20 minutes before this tournament started and we spoke about some of this stuff come about down, Sam. being able to step out of your comfort zone down, have... well okay. he just passed that one with Close. flying Close. Big time. i gotta see the weapon yeah. i gotta get this way lower to bury that again gotta come lower open it up yep yep harris wants the strap again that's what he should go for close your thumbs you can fire right here, and trace right around, here, but I wouldn't waste it. Just get to the strap and don't keep do this out. what you're going to do in the match for real. There's the time. The They're going to the strap. He yep. got what you said he That's wanted. That's what he needed. Yep. Now, again, that bravery required because I'll tell you this, Tony Katowski knows that that could come now, and that leaves options open to him. Okay. Harris told us this morning, he said, my confidence is through the roof. He said, I'm really strong. My arm feels great. You know what? He's just made Tony Katowski think. If you're always throwing the same punch, the guy isn't worried about throwing his haymakers at you. You kick his leg real hard, suddenly he's thinking mm -hmm. about other things. Right. Sam Harris has just made Tony Katowski think a little bit. He has. Sorry. Referee Square Bart up. Wood was Square up. one of those that first got Harris in to competitive right arm there. wrestling. 2 1 Katowski, Here Neil. we go. Big drive from Katowski, and Katowski's gone for the defensive position, and that will pay dividends. He's got a massive amount of power there. Katowski starting to extend now. Harris must stay with that match, but he's horribly extended. He's horribly extended, and I don't think it's possible from there, and it isn't. Katowski with the win. Tony Katowski with the win. The Iron Man is back in the World Arm Wrestling League, and now. The focus has got to turn on how does he feel? Right. How does he feel about that victory? Yep. For him, is it whole? Is it real? Does he give Sam the rematch opportunity? Where next? That's right. Here we go. Let's see these replays. And you can see what he did there. Katowski guessed, and he guessed right. He knew that he was going to be rushed at, and he went to that defensive, countering top roll. As soon as he felt that match stop, he harnessed it and he drove hard back into the side and it pays off for the man from Wisconsin. The Iron Man is back in the World Arm Wrestling League. Another look from up top there at the final pin before we get down to the pit. You feel for Sam Harris there, he wrestled so magnificently, so bravely, threw everything in his arsenal and he fought with every fiber of his being. But on the night, Katowski just had that edge too much and he goes home with the win. Yeah. There's Tony Katowski, the arms in the air, the cash in the hand. He's with Jason Zonefisher. Jason. Wow, spoiler alert, Iron Man lives. Tony Katowski, oh. this has been an emotional 24 hours for you. Can you, you describe the roller coaster that you've been well, through leading up to this match? It's been an emotional year for me. I lost my mother almost a year ago to the day. It's like my dad, he's here right now with us, we love her to death. Um, but the last 48 hours has been absolutely brutal. Um, the normal water cut that I do, which isn't substantial, but it was enough. I just, I did it all wrong, and I know what I did wrong, and unfortunately, unfortunately it was two, two pounds away from making weight, and I had 16 hours to do it, but my body was collapsing and I couldn't do it no more. So safety comes first for my four children at home, my wife, my friends, family, I had to stop. I'll be back. I know what I did wrong. I'll be back. That hammer's going to come home with me. Absolutely. Well, Sam Harris has been an incredible competitor. He has dominated the lightweight division these past two years. 
This is a huge win for you tonight, but you just mentioned you're not taking home that hammer. What does this win mean for you? Well, it means everything to my family's here. And that's truly what's important to me. And like I said, I gave up, I gave up the cut with two pounds to go for the main purpose of my kids and my wife and my family. So, um, you know, that's really at this point, that hammer didn't mean nothing to me compared to them. So now I know what I did wrong. Now that's mine. Well, your family is certainly proud of you. You're an amazing competitor. In 2016, you won two lightweight hammers. Yeah. Then you moved up to the middleweight class. Now you're back here at lightweight. Did you send a message to all of the lightweight competitors here tonight? You're damn right I did. And I'm here to stay, and I ain't going anywhere. Everything's changing. My workouts are changing. I, I switched to all masses last year. I'm getting away from mass workouts, going back to power, what I'm used to doing. And this match right here wouldn't even been as close next year at this time. Guaranteed. Okay, well, I can't wait for next year. It's going to be amazing. Tony Katowski, congratulations. An amazing performance here tonight. Ben, Neil, back to you guys. Thanks, Jason. And Tony mentioned his mom passing nearly a year to the day. There's his father, Robert. He told us this morning, Neil, and this absolutely, you can see the pictures right there. His father was injured in the Vietnam War. He spent three years there. He was eligible to take a Purple Heart opted not to. That's the kind of family, that's the kind of man that raised Tony Katowski. Yeah, and you can see that etched all over there, the character of his son. Tony Katowski is a yes. warrior, he's a real man. This guy is an absolute grinder. He did an excellent job tonight. Forget the weight cut, take that out of it. That was a superb demonstration of arm wrestling from both those guys. And if that sets it up, still to come, we got this lot. We got a lot coming up. Justin Bishop against Rob Vigeon Jr. That one for a hammer. The women take center stage. Devin Larratt and Wagner Bortolato. And then our main event for a hammer as well. Jerry Cataret and Michael Todd. Let's hear from Jerry Cataret about the last time he and Michael Todd got together. Me and Michael Todd, right? To have a match go over seven minutes. That's insane, right? And I mean, listen. There's matches that you're gonna see the seven minutes and people are out and they, you know they're just like in a like a neutral position where there's not a lot of force. There was force, right? I I mean I probably lost you know 16 ounces of sweat. Right? It was on the table and I'm looking down at it. And you know what the worst part was? I'm going. I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm like, oh my god, I don't gotta last forever. I just gotta last one second more than Michael, right? But it felt like forever. Right? And the sweat's coming down, and you can't take your hand off the peg, right? The sweat's coming down from my face, and it's going in my eyes. So I'm trying to like flick it out. It's stinging, right? So you go in and go in, and like the sweat's coming, and just watch it. I'm like, oh, 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 right? Dying and just pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm like, I can't lose. I can't lose. I can't stop. I can't stop. And then ends up uh, <laughs> finally, you know, you're like, uh, bam. Finally, there's a, there's a break. There's a, like a glimmer of hope. He's letting up, and boom, you know, I was able to come out with the win. But I come out with the win to get the restart because my elbow came off. So seven minutes to get a restart. That's insane. The UEFA Champions League. The pressure to fight, the winter, the snow, the rain, the world at your palm, the trying to feel everything. Oh, what's it going? The UEFA Champions League. Watch on TNT, stream on BR Live. A hero looks to inspire through his passion. Honor, integrity, respect. That's what one championship is about. This is awesomeness! One championship, the home of martial arts. Stream on BR Live. Hi, I'm Bart Wood, head referee of the World Arm Wrestling League. I'm going to go over how to speak WAL. Hook is a term you'll hear during a match. A hook is when the opponent's Twist the wrist straight down, and now all the pressure is arm to arm and out of the hand. During a match, you'll also hear the term top roll. Top roll is when the person wants to attack the hand and stay away from the arm. So they simply drive back into the fingertips, rotating out to the corner of the table. During that process, sometimes a slip occurs. Both opponents go out and they slip out. That's when we bring out the strap. Another term you'll hear during a match is the press. A press is simply when the opponent gets his shoulder behind his hand 
and he shoves straight down with as much pressure as he can. These are all terms and techniques that you're going to hear during a match, and that's how you speak WAL. There's Bart Wood speaking a little WAL. Look at our crowd here at Turner Studio in Atlanta. There's Juji Mufu. He was involved in the preliminary match along with Mike Aiello. Aiello won that one, but it was certainly entertaining. Down to Jason with Juji Mufu. Juji, you are always on. You're always posing. Now, you may know Juji Mufu from your many viral videos. You got millions of followers on social media. You do everything when it comes to strength and fitness. But what has drawn you to the sport of arm wrestling? Man, I work out my arms a lot, and I just didn't realize, like, the different sized people, like, people smaller than me are wasting me at this. It's crazy how technical and, and just in-depth the sport is. Yeah, so do you want to compete in the WAL? Is this a goal of yours? How much time, you know how much time it takes and effort to get to this elite level? I've only been doing this for a year, and i got a lot of other things i got to do with my time, but i just got to take my time. But, you know, the draw of arm wrestling for me is getting some big arms. So we've got four more great matches left. Is there one you're most looking forward to here tonight? Well, I can't pick favorites, but, uh, you know, I'm partial to Devin because we're friends. Okay, then. All right. Well, that's coming up soon. We can't wait. Juju Muvu, thanks for being here tonight. A lot more fun still to come, like right now, Ben. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, Juju Mufu. Yeah, he's a smart guy. Go with Devin. So coming up next, though. Rob Vigent Jr. holds the hammer. Justin Bishop, he's been in this time. He told us he's been in this position to win a hammer. This will be the fifth time he's yet to do it, Neil. It will, Ben, and what an opportunity he has. Got a situation here where he's facing a dominant champion. Justin Bishop's coming in as a heavy underdog. He has nothing to lose and everything to gain. Tail the tape, do you make much of this or do we need to see a little bit more numerically on the next page maybe? What we can see is that the bigger human being is Rob Bidget Jr. in terms of frame. This is a big man, he's got long levers, huge hands. But the big telling thing here is that the Bauer Ball has evolved into a real middleweight. Interestingly, these guys weighed in at the same size. Exactly. Justin Bishop, the pride of Alexander City, Alabama. Let's go at home and learn a little bit more about this carpenter. Every summer we'd go to work with Dad, pick up two by fours all day in this 98% humidity. Well, this is an easy day, but usually, you know, I get a good forearm pump, I mean, 10, 15 times a day. Two things I know how to do, build houses and arm wrestling. There's a lot of guys that sit at a desk all day. There's no way your hand and wrist is gonna be stronger than mine. I use it all day. At the end of the day, it's just another guy across the table in my way for my money. I feel it's already my money. We're just here trying to take it. All right, so we welcome you to our office for the evening. Neil Pickup, Ben Holden, all of our great crew. It's a pleasure to be with you here tonight. Neil, let's talk about these two men. Rob Vigent Jr. holds the hammer. Thoughts on him going into this match here tonight? I think my, th my thoughts on Rob Vigent Jr. are that this is one of the most gifted individuals ever to grace the sport of arm wrestling. He was handed down tools by God, and they were meant to arm wrestle. This guy's got the upper body of a 242 man and the legs of a sparrow hawk. <laughs> he is absolutely made for this game and few men want to deal with this individual at the table. And I'll tell you something else, he's mildly nuts and that's a weapon too. <laughs> on the other side, the man with a fedora in honor of the late great Bear Bryant, the Bama Bull, Justin Bishop. This is an absolute hard case of an individual, just a grafter. He works hard at everything he does. He comes from a family of people who are grafters to their core, and he's worked hard at becoming the very best middleweight arm wrestler he can become. We don't know how strong this guy is. His last win, he did at such a pace, there was no measuring stick. We're gonna find out exactly how good he is in just a few minutes. We are. Justin Bishop, he's a carpenter. Rob Vigent Jr., general contractor. Let's go at home and get to know RVJ a little bit better. I don't really have a hole in my game. It's a sport of fractions of an inch. And you gotta be diligent in knowing the angles and really analyzing those pressures and make apparatuses that directly emulate those fractions of an inch feeling of what you get when you're in an actual match. It was like ergonomic, like grabbing a person's hand at fit the right angle. With all my leverage and power, there's nobody in any weight class that can beat me if I've got them leveraged from here. Nobody. 
right, so we get to know both men a little bit better. The particulars here, the technical areas on both these men, Neil. Interestingly, if you look at the cord there, these guys are rated similar level on power. I would disagree. I think the power swings heavily for RVJ. However, acid weaponry of Justin Bishop is the hand and wrist. This man has a world-class hand and wrist. We've seen him expose guys the likes of the Jedi, Yanis Amelins. If you can take away that guy's hand, you can probably take away God's hand. Outstanding. I want to remind you tonight's broadcast and our stream around the world presented and brought to you by VR Live, Bleacher Report Live. We appreciate all they've done for the WAL here in the last two seasons here in the Supermatch Showdown Series. Great crowd, great turnout. Neil, we're ready for match number two. Without further ado, our pit announcer, the one and only Justin Roberts. This is the first of two title bouts, a best of five match for the WAL Middleweight Championship. Making his way to the table first, the challenger, standing at six feet tall, weighing in at 199.5 pounds, with a record of 22 wins and 10 losses. He's on a big roll after an impressive win at WAL 503. Competing out of Alexander City, Alabama, he is Justin Bishop. The Bama Bull in the house. This guy has an aura around him, yes. an aura of invincibility, an aura of confidence. It hides beneath the hat with a scowl and a frown. And believe me, he didn't come to Atlanta to lose. This is a confident young man. It certainly is. And his opponent, standing at six feet, two inches tall, also weighing in at 199.5 pounds, with an impressive record of 32 wins against only six defeats. He has been virtually unstoppable over the past two years. Competing out of Newburyport, Massachusetts, he is the current WAL middleweight champion and hammer holder, Rob Vigent Jr. There he is, look upon the middleweight, champion of the world, Rob Vigent Jr. What a gifted individual this guy is physically. On Black Friday at the arm wrestling shop, this guy was at the front of the queue and he bought the house. <laughs> Incredibly gifted athlete his entire life. Perfect. Went into business, the family business, construction, and There's the cash, the Neil. That's what they came for. They came for the cash. They came for the reputation. One man came to keep the hammer. The other man came to snatch it from him. Yes. Now I mentioned we touched on it a little bit with Justin Bishop. Fifth time he's been in this position. What do you feel he's got to do, number one, to, to get table. over the hump? I said it with Sam Harris and Tony Katowski. He needs to be hey, a surprise package. The shoulders. punch that puts you on your ass Open is the hand. one you didn't see coming. And he needs to be no elusive early. Right Keep there. Rob Vigent guessing Close and thumbs. make Rob try to bully him. Make Rob try to Rob hang on to him. A bit here so I can, Best I of five for thumb the thumb. hammer. Okay. RBJ right told you last night the unknown with yeah, Bishop. Right he's here. never pulled him at this weight. He doesn't know what he's going to get. These guys never met before. Close your hand. My It'll, my this first star will be oh, interesting. Justin Bishop is very, very smart at the table, particularly on the oh, hand and wrist. He's going, he's going like this, okay? Just give me my knuckle. Ah! Rob Vigent Jr. sometimes needs, he's like that guy that needs to slap himself awake a little bit on occasion. And we'll see which Rob showed up in round one straight off the bat. He certainly doesn't want to give Justin any opportunities hey, unnecessarily. Palm palm. He's a dangerous guy to let right hit here. you. Little, Justin. Strap being applied, best of five, hammer on the line. RVJ owns it. The Bama Bull wants it. The strap has been an issue for Rob Vigent Jr. in the past. A lot of accusations that he didn't pull as well in the strap. Justin will be well aware of that, and it's not an accident that we're in there. But one thing I will say is that Rob Vigent Jr.'s last couple okay. of outings, he's used the strap diligently. He's used it to his advantage, and he dominated Storm Cellino, who'd previously mastered him in the yeah. strap. So Close it's an up. area he's improved a lot. Here Stay we go. Right here. The best of five, no pull number one from the strap, Neil. Close your hands. 
Little jump start there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Offsetting Sweet both corner each other upset him. <laughs> Early right out of the now. blocks for the Bomber Bowl. Yes. Don't move on me. I got it. Better to go right first than Close your thumbs. Trace around fired. Close your hands. Go. On the way we go. Bishop has the wow. Did you have your Wait, cameras up. ready? Because the Bama Bull just lit up Robigian Jr. What oh. about that? Go over to his dad and celebrate. His father told me before we came out here, yeah. he doesn't need luck. He's going to surprise a lot of people. There's his dad working on his arm. But watch this sweet moment for the Bishop boys. He rolls, and Rob Vigent was caught holding him. Yeah. He was trying to hang on to him. Rob needs to hit back. He needs to be the aggressor. You can't let world-class guys hit on you. Rob may wake up, and if he does wake up, everybody take a step back because this guy hits hard. This is far from over, ladies and gents. A oh, long way to go, best of five, and the reacts from Justin Bishop there. The bull came ready to ride tonight. Yes, he did, Ben Holden. Yes, he did. Look at the eyes yes. of the Bama Bull. Tony Katowski in his corner as well. I'd like to get a look at Rob Vigent Jr. and see what's going on in the mind of the champion. You Here ask? we go. There you go. He needs to stay calm. We are in an arm wrestling match, ladies and gents. We are in an arm wrestling match. It's on. Vigent Jr., where are you at? This guy knows he can do it. The only man that can beat Vigent Jr. is often himself. I would love to see Rob wake up right around now, and we'll end up with a war. But what a start from Justin Bishop. Dream start. Dream start for the Bishop boy. He needs to wake up after what we saw there. Justin Bishop made very quick work from the strap. I think I set the square yes, up. The one nothing lead. Ignition right time for Bishop. He held nothing back on that hit. He drove. Oh, His wrist was being sacrificed to touch, Close but he didn't up. mind dumping right it here. just to get that Close side pressure on oh, One foul and speed right here. was the Captain. weapon. One foul. Little foul, foul Justin Bishop. Yeah. Yep. And he, you know what? He's not worried about that too much. What he's trying to do is just keep that guess. Keep Rob working. Keep Rob guessing where the next direction is coming from. He's a smart guy. To the strap. Vigent Time. looks a little pensive. Rob needs to rev up. Needs to get, if he bite it, I'll tell you what, if Rob Vigent Jr. finds a slight foothold in this match, you'll see that face change. Yeah. At the moment, there's not a great deal of confidence no, in there. No, I was going to say the same thing. It didn't look like a very confident look on his face there. Needs to just wake up, slap himself awake. He's got the tools, just needs to remember where that latch on the box is. He talked this morning to us about the two wolves he has inside of him. Yes. And those wolves right now, he's got to let the one out that wins this arm wrestling match. Mm -hmm. The lack of confidence is Close a problem yourself. and has been throughout right his here, career. Go. Don't Close hang on, hit Go. back. There's that drive and the brakes have gone on. Very different arm wrestling match now, ladies and gents. Vigent Jr. is alive, alive, oh. This is Vigent's match, believe me. He's taking control. Yes. And now the smile breaks on the face of Rob Vigent Jr. 1-1, one, one, yeah. leveling blow. And look at the reaction from that young man. The hammer holder just tightened his grip on the handle, and he tightened hard. He evens it up at 1-1. One, one. You got 90 seconds between pulls in this hammer match here in the middleweight division. Tremendous start there from Robbie. Guessed right. He sucked back into that defensive He's top roll, and he him. let Justin continue to attack, and Justin hung himself. He rushed to the side, he sacrificed his hand. Rob Vigent Jr. rolls his dominance to the crowd. He's back in the match, and this thing has just lit up. Fasten up your chin straps, ladies and gents. It's about to get bumpy. Vigent's corner, and a little medical attention there. 
in the corner for Justin Bishop there. And it seemed like an injury to his knee. I have no idea what happened to his thumb. He was holding his knee when he walked away from there. Maybe he's popped the thumbnail off. Can happen. Yeah. And it's a horribly painful injury when that does happen. But he was gripping his knee really hard when he walked back. It was yeah. almost like he Saw damaged that. something there. Yeah. There's his wife looking on. Indeed, a little bit of nerves creeping in there, but yep. Justin, Justin's fine. Looks confident, looks comfortable. Got a lot of good advice there. Katowski. Let's see if uh, we can get a look at that yeah. injury. Yet. Watch the thumb. Yeah, so much better. You can see that the thumb has burst there. Yeah. Maybe nothing, maybe just a little bit of skin rubbed off. Or it could be the nail. On occasion, you, the pressure in there can just pop the skin around your nail and sometimes you lose the nail but all right gentlemen the old man just put some tape on it right yeah yeah he won't mind a little bit of paint no this guy close your thumb looks like he just hit him in the face with a baseball bat and he spit toothpicks back one one here in this championship middleweight match for the hammer close your hand he's over my thumb i i'll call it if he does as a foul i'll call it let him do it i'll call it more chalk for bishop Pretty sure that's the first pin we've seen Rob Bidgeon yeah. Jr. lose in the 500 time. series. The first pin that I can recall him losing. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that is the, the situation. Maybe Tuye got one off him, but I can tell you this. Either way, Justin Bishop has definitely let Rob know he's there and let yes. Rob know that he carries a threat. The threat is speed. The threat is the top row. He's out of the blocks earlier. Rob seems to be just allowing him to initiate. Now, he guessed correctly there and went to that defensive blocking top roll. It worked well for him, but I wouldn't do it again because Justin was slow to climb last time. I imagine he'll make some adjustments. The big difference here is that Rob Bidget Jr.'s confidence has come rushing back. It's almost as though it's been poured back into him. And look at the face of him now. Yep. Very much different. Don't back push your One-one. Go. Close your hands. On the way, oh, Rob Bishop Jr. Low cut, and he's in control. He's looking at Bishop. Justin's arm is strong, but no, strong enough. Rob Bishop Jr. puts the weaponry to good use. It's true for the hammer holder. RBJ is coming alive after Bishop made quick work in hole number one. He's now one win away from retaining the hammer. One round, shoot, beat me three. Rob Bidgent Jr. is the kid at school that when his mom, when his teacher wrote home, he said, just does enough. <laughs> is he capable of doing more? Absolutely he is. This may be the best middleweight in the world, but he never usually gets out of second gear. God only knows how fast this guy goes in top. I really don't know. But one thing I can tell you, is that Justin's going to have to work very, very hard now, and he's going to have to create a different angle. I'm a fucking professional. Over to the corner of the Bama Bowl, Justin Bishop, who's got to find a way to dig in and win to keep this thing alive to force a fifth pull. This is a strength sport. Arm wrestling is about who is stronger. End of the strategies. There's technique, but the technique is useless unless you have enough power to make the technique effective. In that last start, the simple fact was Justin didn't really do anything wrong. He just was out leveraged. He's against a bigger, longer arm, yep. a bigger hand, and he was against a stronger man in that position. What he's got to do now, he's got to try and unbalance Rob. He's got to try and come out of his comfort zone. Very similar situation to the one we saw Sam Harris in. Yes. So 2-1, RVJ, been at this for 15 years as a professional. Loves the process and the Good, pursuit. Nice and the pursuit setup. right now, Neil Pickup, is for him to win here and retain the hammer. Them all, Justin, straighten them all. Don't let me interest in much you. now. Justin. Right, come over a little bit, Justin. You got him about 2 o'clock. Right? Needs to understand that a loaded right start. Here, here, By here, that, I mean a start good. with pressure. If he loads back, if he Close tries to apply pressure before right the start, here, it's not a good Close idea here. for Justin. He needs to create space That's and then down, move into that here. space. That's give himself a little bit of inertia, a little bit of a momentum. 
Rob Vigent Jr. Slow. may Slow be a little strap. too confident and allow Justin to hit him again. Yeah. That would be a mistake. Mm -hmm. Let's go, gentlemen. Back to the strap we go as the 30-second clock right. had expired. Second of five matches here to tonight. Just open this up, gentlemen. Main there event between the reigning hammer holder, the monster Michael Todd and Jerry Cataret. So many incredible matches still to come, and yep. what a start to proceedings tonight. Beautiful. Matches swinging backwards and forwards. Yep. All the people who said that Justin Bishop had no chance. Well, I'll tell you this. He's done himself proud right now. Took the pin off Robin, impressive fashion. Came close on the second. Has he got anything left? He's gone to the red line. Yep. He's gone to the bank. What did he withdraw? Okay, here we go. Let's We're get about this going. to see. Up. He's got to get this one to stay alive, or RVJ. Wait, wait, wait. Don't be a two-time hammer holder. Open up. Right there. All the doors. Web is equal. Or Hands slightly ajar for Rob Vigent Open Jr. Up. He just needs to shut them Open down, no shut right down there. the angles, Close make this about strength, and he will retain the hammer. Close Justin Bishop Go. needs to kick the damn thing off the hinges. Oh, Vigent Jr. Boom! There goes the power. He goes home with the hammer, and Vigent Jr. stamps his authority onto the middleweight division. He is. The champion of the world, Rob Vincent Jr. Welcome to the Multi Hammer Club, Rob Vincent Jr. Back to back years in the middleweight division. He gets it done this year against Justin Bishop. We're going to look at that last start there, and you could see right off the start that Rob Vincent Jr. took control of the hand and wrist, and from there, he had every opportunity to work, sucked in that hand and wrist, used that lap pressure as he drove to the side and took the pin from a very impressive Justin Bishop. And then watch this moment afterwards, show of respect. There's so much class and respect in this sport. And RBJ right over to the Bama Bull to say, hey, nice job, I'm keeping the hammer though. These guys from similar parts of the world, they're very similar characters. Yes. Massive respect, and rightly so. Great match, gentlemen. And let's get down into the pit. Jason Zone Fisher with Justin Bishop. Justin, we just saw you shared a moment with RVJ right after the match. What did you guys say to each other? Uh, just mutual respect there. I told him I'd see him again, and he said, I know. <laughs> so, you know, that's... That's all it is. When we step to the table, we're no longer friends, but right after, you know, always goes back to the same thing. That's one of the best things about this sport, for sure. Now, you started strong. You came out and won pretty easily in that first match. What happened from that point forward? Um, it just went the way I wanted it to. So <laughs> he, made a, he made a good adjustment in the second. I made another in the third. It didn't work. Same thing for the fourth. Um, I believe that my side pressure was equivalent to beat him if I got a good strap set up and kept it flat. Um, I f assumed I could hang on a little longer without my hand, but obviously I couldn't, so. Well, you put up a fight, and I know that you're from the South, from Alabama. You're here with your entire family. What does it mean to have your family here in your corner tonight? It, it means the world. Um, the only, only thing that could have made it better is winning, but um, you know, to be up here, have this opportunity, and to do it in front of my, you know, essentially my home crowd, I can't ask for any better. Absolutely. Well, we know you'll be back. As you said, you should be proud. But let's give it up also for RVJ, Rob Vision Jr. Rob, you, you have been so dominant in this division these last two seasons. I, I mean, who is next for you? What is next for you? I'm just here for whoever they put in front of me. I'm enjoying the experience. And once I stop looking at it as a, a nervy competition, having a good time with it, this whole thing has been great. It's been amazing. Now, you lost that first round, as we just talked about. What adjustments did you make that proved to be the difference here tonight? I'm like one of those guys that sometimes needs to get punched in the face to get up and fight. And that first round was a punch in my face. <laughs> well. You don't want to punch RVJ in the face, that is for sure. What does this win and this hammer mean to you? 
It means a lot. I mean, it, it gives me legitimacy in the sport that I love, and I'm just going to pursue it and take it as long as my body will let me. Well, it's time to celebrate. Let's bring out the hammer. Everyone give it up for your reigning middleweight WAL champion, Rob Vigent Jr. Two-time, two-time hammer winner, back-to-back -back years. A lot more to come. The women take center stage. Wagner, Bordelotto, and Devin Larratt in our main event. Jerry Cataret against the reigning hammer holder, the monster Michael Todd. That'll be our main event in our fifth match of the night. Sarah Backman backstage. She's getting ready for her match with Gabby Vasconcellos. What do you say we get to know Sarah Backman a little bit more? My name is Sarah Backman. I'm from Stockholm, Sweden, but I currently live in Brooksville, Florida. What brought me into arm wrestling was, um, I was a kid, I was 14 years old, I went, was in high school, and um, uh, there was an arm wrestling competition, and I competed, and I won. I beat everybody. I like to have at least 10 weeks um, of time before I enter a major competition. The, the training is very specific. Um, I do strength training um, six times a week, and. Um, arm wrestling specific exercise three times a week, so between seven and nine workouts a week. Pulling in WAL is so cool. Um, coming from Sweden and now being an American, um, it's an American league and it's just, I feel proud. I'm gonna beat Gabby today because I poured my heart and soul into this match for the past couple of months. Everything I've done is for this very moment. UEFA Champions League. The pressure to fight, the winter, the snow, the rain, the world at your palms, we're trying to feel everything. Oh, what's it going? The UEFA Champions League. Watch on TNT, stream on BR Live. A hero looks to inspire through his passion. Honor, integrity, respect. That's what one championship is about. This is awesomeness. One championship, the home of martial arts. Stream on BR Live. Beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, site for the second straight year of championship night here. WAL 506, two matches complete. One hammer's been handed out, one more to go here in our main event. WAL 506 Atlanta is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, the official sports bar of the World Arm Wrestling League. This summer, Buffalo Wild Wings hosted a series of WAL events at select Buffalo Wild Wings locations. The events were a smashing success. Let's take a closer look. All right, back inside of Turner Studio here in Atlanta, Georgia. And you saw those great things that happened this summer with the Buffalo Wild Wings folks. And this man responsible for that, Steve Kaplan, President, Commissioner, Chairman, CEO of the WAL. Good to see you, Steve. How are you? Great to be here. What a night. What oh, a night man. so far. And Main course is coming up, baby, right? Isn't it just? Oh, yes. Can't wait. Yeah. And, and just to follow up to what we just saw there, just another way that you and everyone, all of us involved in the sport, trying to grow the sport of arm wrestling. Yeah, we are. And Buffalo Wild is just a, the perfect partner. It's just a, a great brand, iconic brand with a lot of locations and you know, a partner that we're looking forward to growing with. So you know we didn't just bring you into chit chat, right? <laughs> no, we got hardly. We got some <laughs> questions. We're going to go to the social media world for some of the questions. And I know you're ready to answer some. There's the first one from Arm Power. Can you give a brief rundown of how athletes can get recognized by the, by the match builders 
and start working for an opportunity with you. Thanks. What's your reply to that? Absolutely. A question that we uh, you won't be surprised to hear. This is not the first time we've heard this. Yeah, I'm sure. So um, every year, the WA roster, it's really important that we grow and build our roster. This year over last year, we had 15 new competitors in the elite level. So what the committee does is we go out and we look to find the best arm wrestlers, most charismatic arm wrestlers. We have uh, just a expert committee that goes and takes a look at these guys and then we invite him to uh, do a, a preliminary match see how everything goes um, and then uh, and then we look for a match for them and like I said last year out of um, 30 matches we have 15 new competitors yeah it's pretty exciting I, I caught myself this year and I know Neil's heavily involved in that yeah. obviously but I caught myself with a lot of new people this year yeah to, to Steve's point Here's another question from social media. T-shirts, merch, please. <laughs> Sounds like me, right? You're right, right. <laughs> I've had to go to the black market to the get black some. Black market, baby. And I'd much rather the money go to the WAL. <laughs> That's from AWIS88. You reply to that. Uh, AWIS88. Well, I tell you, uh, we have uh, some new merch actually online now. We have a, a championship night shirt that we have. And we're just in the middle of, of finishing off an entire new brand, rebranding, uh, a bunch of WAL gear. So look for it soon. But right now, you can get a championship championship night t-shirt and another uh, version yeah, yeah look, look at those things. yeah yeah right now i guess we got shirts coming huh juji mufu's back there taking them <laughs> that's great yeah let's Any, get him to sign them anything else you'd like to say before we let you go well first of all i'm Super pumped to hear it's for Gabby and Sarah. I cannot wait for that match. Oh. I know Neil, I know you are too, but I do want to thank the fans in WAL Nation. You guys are what makes us go, and we're growing like crazy, and it's solely because of you, so thank you. All right, Steve. Well, we appreciate you coming by. Great Thanks. job as always, Benny. Thank you. It's always Cheers, a pleasure Neil, and man. an honor to be with you. Thanks, buddy. You can follow us on a variety of different social media platforms. Of course, our website, WALunderground.com. Go to YouTube. Go to Facebook. Go to Instagram, go to Twitter. We're all over the place and always great content on there from the fine folks that take care of all those things for us here in the WAL. And back in our office for the night, Ben Holden, Neil Pickup. Ben, this is the one, mate. I hope you We're guys fired are ready. Up. This is the one. I've been so excited Woo! about this match. Yes. It's about to go down. Let's look at this tail of the Let's stick, do it. shall we? Let's do it. So the Sarah Bachman, Gabriela Vasconcelos, you yes. heard it right, the two biggest names in the world of female arm wrestling. They've met before, each of them has a win. But when you look at the stats, one thing this doesn't tell you is the similarity that we have right here. This is about mental. Both these girls have tapped out, topped out, in terms of the level. Who brought their A game? That's what I want to see. I'm going to throw out another number at you. Between these two women, by my count, correct me if I'm wrong, 36 world titles. That is correct. I mean, Gabriela Vasconcelos herself has 28, 28 yes. world titles. Let's have a quick look at Gabby Vasconcelos. Let's, let's get to know Gabby a little bit more here before we see her compete against Sarah Backman. My name is Gabi Vasconcelos and I'm from Campinas, Brazil. I started arm wrestling because I was invited by another athlete. She thought that I was strong enough. I actually had no idea that arm wrestling was a sport and I was very surprised when I realized I was good at it. It got tricky in the beginning, but in a couple of months I was already like a national champion in Brazil and I was only 12 years old, so I guess I'm not sure. <laughs> Pulling at the WAL means a lot to me. It's like the biggest window for any athlete in arm wrestling nowadays, and it shows that the world is recognizing all the effort you've been putting into it. I'm gonna beat Sarah today because I trained really, really hard for it. I have this huge opportunity in my hands, and I won't let it go. I know that she's very strong. I know she's trained hard as well but that's my time to shine. All right, so there's an up close and personal with Gabby and the particulars here, Neil, I mean, this oh. looks very even. Yeah, you know what? I said it just a moment ago. Look at those numbers. Power nine, hit nine. Hook nine. These girls are at the absolute peak of what can be achieved in this sport. And when you get to those fine margins, it's gonna come down to who makes a mistake. 
if you make a mistake at this level, you will get punished. All right, without further ado, our pit announcer, Justin Roberts, with the introductions. It is now time for one of our feature bouts of the evening, a very special best of five match yeah. with international implications. They asked me, now what makes a champion? <laughs> Introducing to the pit first, standing at five feet, one inch tall, and weighing in at 176 pounds, competing out of Campinas, Sao Paulo, Brazil, where she is a gymnastics coach. She is widely recognized across the globe as one of the most powerful and technical arm wrestlers anywhere, and has won over 28 world titles, making her WAL debut, the Iron Angel. Cubby Vasconcelos! Look upon the amazing Gabriella Iron Angel Vasconcelos. This lady is the very best of the female arm wrestlers in the world. Her first experience in World Arm Wrestling League, will she arrive with thunder? and her opponent, standing at five feet, seven inches tall, and weighing in at 176 Whoa! pounds, competing out of Brooksville, Florida, by way of Stockholm, Sweden. Her achievements include winning eight world titles, eight European titles, and 11 Swedish titles in record time, earning her the reputation as the strongest, and also one of the most recognized female arm wrestlers in the world. She is the top role model, Sarah Blackman. Sarah Blackman walked out with a purpose. There's a venom in this young lady, and that stride is like she's about to walk up to your front door, kick it in, and steal your family savings. This girl comes to the table with bad intentions. Get out of the way, the train's coming. W-A-L, money girl. And the two competitors in our money girl tonight is Natalia. She brings the cash out and lays it on the table for these two women. Ready to do battle here. I don't know whether you noticed there, Benny. Natalia gave a little bit of a yeah, slip. Yeah, I saw that. And for a slight moment, I thought she'd fallen for me. <laughs> Ladies to the table. Come on! Mark Woods summons them both to the table. I don't know how I follow some of your comments sometimes, by the way. I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> don't be sorry. I what love I, it. What I can say, Ben, open is I am ready for this one. We're all ready. In a very long time. Here we go. Third time these two women have ever met. Come down a little bit, sir. They met in Close 2012 and then 2013. Close Close your Back from ah! huge strike. Wow. Yeah! Enormous hit to the side from Gabi Vasconcelos. She drove aggressively. She could not finish. We slip. We will tie these ladies together. Strap being applied. Elbow down. And this best of five. The focus there from Backman. The venom in the hit there from Gabriela Vasconcelos. Yep. She was picked as favorite by a lot of people, Ben. Yeah. I was going to say we had the Iron Man, Tony Katowski, who won earlier. Now we've got the Iron Angel. Look at the determination. Big time. Just on that face. Backman wants this so very bad. A return to the sport after yep. lengthy absence from yep. competition. What a way to come back in. Yep. Not all that easing there, yourself there, down there, the steps. Right into it. From the 50-foot board into the deep end. <laughs> well said. No Right there. Set your elbows down. Put in the center, please. Mm -hmm. I'll get you. We've seen unbelievably high-level competition in the ladies this year. Fiatasic, Alan Kleinsmith. And we saw Kleinsmith launch her career in World Arm Wrestling League with a bang. You can hear the elbow shouts from the crowd, but not from the wrestlers. They look ready. Well, Jody Larratt in the corner. Yeah, Always, her opinion. Close her hands. Always be Go. a shy lady. Massive drive for the Vasconcelos. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Huge Love drive. It. I'll tell you what, that meant a lot yeah. to the lady from Sao Paulo. She emerged into the sport of arm wrestling at 
world level. Manchester 2006, the Trafford Centre double gold for the baby Iron Angel. She's matured, the wings are spread, and she just took off. Watch this hit from Gabriela Vasconcelos. Massive side pressure. Enough to take the pin. There it is from above. Boom. Oh, look at that elbow. Yeah. Looked like an elbow foul there. Close, very close. Yeah, real close. That was an angle. Look at it again there. Boom, yeah. Looks like it's up. And we may go to the square in the air. Yeah, I think we might. I think this may be square in the air. Did you see her elbow? Look like it on that one angle. I think Gabby wants to look at the square in the air, and I think she's got a, a real case there. What's the call from Bart Wood? Because that looked like an elbow foul. We may see it on the... No call. At least for the time being. Yeah. Not sure what we'll see. Will it go to the square in the air? Bart saying no. Bart saying no. I would love to see that on the replay again. Yes. Let's have a look at that. Wish. If we can slow it a little, right there. Elbow yeah. point is off the pad. Controversial start, but you win them, you lose them, you ride your luck. That looked like an elbow infringement. Look Certainly at it did. there. Yes. You can clearly see all that area on the pad yep. as we go. And Bort's just seen it. We're going to the restart. Yep. Call we are. Bart Wood. He zero, sees zero. it. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. Yep. We saw it on the square in the air. And Bart Wood, in usual fashion, says no. No result. Great referee in there. Yes, and he got is. to see that on the overhead. He remains calm and makes the decision. Let's go. So he's 0-0 zero, zero affair here between Baston Sellis and Backman. Either way, incredible hit from Vasco Big time. Big time. How much damage was done there? Has Sarah Backman got anything? We have one elbow foul. That. It's a foul on Gabby. Three and you lose the pull, of course, for those that may be watching for the first time around the world on VR Live and other avenues. I don't think Gabriella will lose a lot of sleep over that, Ben, just looking at her face there. She seems quite calm. She quite does. Confident. I'd agree with you. Big drive. Oh, we're on the inside. Wow! Gabriela Vasconcelos. What a powerhouse! No fall oh, there. That looked as clean as a whistle. Did certainly did, Neil. She set it. She hooked in, and she exploded. And the speed from Gabby there was nuts. Let's have a look at that again. We'll see it again. Watch her set this hook up the start. Drags back and then boom. And it was actually Sarah. I love the look in her eyes. Watch this. Boom, Man. there's the explosion. But you know what? She <laughs> timed it really well. Look from the upward angle there. It was actually Sarah that started to initiate the hook. Look at the face of the Iron Angel. Unbelievable power. I want to see. Bart's looking at this one too. Bart Wood, our referee. We didn't see the elbows on the replay there. Yeah, it looked like it was up again. Let's have another look. We maybe slow it down. The funny thing is, though, these hard trace around shots do damage to the arm. Bart's going to have a look at it. We'll probably see it again come oh, yeah. from the monitors. Certainly. And when we do, let's see what happens with those elbows. We're in solidly there. We can't see yet. Let's have a look. It's no onto the table. Hey, you know what, though? I'd like to see that from a different angle because that may have been a pin before the infringement. Let's see. Two fouls. Bart just gave us the signal. She pinned her real low there. That may have been after the finish. Let's have a look. Drive. What's important here is the level of the wrist. I no, think no, foul. Elbow foul. It's an elbow foul. Yes. Bartwood's given the foul. Got to keep now. that elbow on the pad. It, 
If you want certainty, Gabriella oh. just needs to keep her elbow Your on the pad. Your elbow's coming off as the pin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> huh? the, the two counter fouls. We have two two elbow fouls. Second elbow foul on Gabriella. Yes. Beyond no contestation, the elbow came off. Gabby just needs to calm down and relax. She's yeah, got the power to win the match, but she's rushing it. Two Almost too explosive. Yeah. Calm two down. Fouls. Zero zero match. Keep two your fouls. elbow solid. One. You've got. So, the power advantage. Let's listen Still, to Bart first Wolf. round. Two elbow fouls. Two fouls. Match is still on. On Vasconcelos. 0-0 zero, zero the score. Gabby needs to just take a measured approach. Calm herself a little bit. She's clearly got a great deal more power yes. on the inside than her opponent. No need to pin her like that. Strap being applied. Backman, she started arm wrestling competitively when she was 14. Vasconcelos at 12 years of age. Elbow, elbow. Of course, you've educated me Put well on the women of Sweden and how good they are, the best female arm wrestlers in the world. They really are, and there's so many of them. But in Gabi Vasconcelos, you're looking at a lady who is really a unique Close your Unique hands. athlete. This Go. is a girl that bench presses. Oh, look at that. No foul I there. Mean, not, I mean, how's that one? <laughs> she oh, looked. yeah. She said, is that fair enough? That well, yes, fair. it was. Yes. And you know what? Obviously, there's a little bit of venom in Gabby there, but what I'll say is this. She will, when she goes home and she watches that video, this is a very honest young lady. She'll look at it and she'll say, okay, I get it. My elbow was off. She slowed down. She collected herself, and she hammered that one home. Gabby is rock strong. Bart Wood doing a very good job of communicating, letting her know the how and why of the fouls. The most interesting element there as well is that those hard hits that went into Sarah will have done damage, sure. believe me. Even yep. though the fouls were called, the pain, the, the, the issue with the arm, the elbow, the wrist, all those elastic elements of the joint are stretched out, and they're stretched out hard. In this last one, you could see Sarah didn't get anywhere near position. Look at that. Yeah. Super smooth, and Sarah knows she's got nowhere to go. Hand and wrist was the issue. She tries to get a position where her arm is in contact with Gabriella's arm, and it never happened. Gabby just shut down the light, yep. turned them off, and an acknowledgement on the face of Sarah that that is a very, very powerful Brazilian athlete right there. It certainly is. 15 seconds. We'll see another one in our next match. Of course, Marcio Barbosa, Brazilian as well, well represented in the WAL. We've seen Marcio so many times here. Two more Brazilians making their bow tonight. Yeah. Wagner is another exciting prospect, but the flags will be waving in Sao Paulo tonight <laughs> because Gabi Vasconcelos is really making a statement. The second super high level female athlete that's debuted here Open and come relax. out on fire. She has. What will we see from Gabi here? When they last met in 2013, Vasconcelos Close clean yourself. sweep and winning right that here. match. Close on your home hands. territory. Go. Big drive there, but it's all hand and wrist. Look at the power. Gabby's just got too much in yep. all areas. That was ridiculous. So steady, so calm. Brutal power from the Brazilian puller. 2 nothing lead after brutal power. She had thought she'd pin Backman twice, yep. only to have two fouls. And she's got a 2 nothing lead. Sarah in the corner there talking to Jordy Larratt. Yeah. John Wilson sat right behind her. Yep. And she just said, my God, she's so strong. And you know what? For someone like Backman to make that comment, this is a girl that's arm wrestled every high level puller in the female division, regardless of weight. And I've never heard her speak about anyone like that. Let's have a look at this again. You'll see, look at the integrity on the hand and wrist. Even though her fingers are stretched open, you can see that they are never compromised. Gabi Vasconcelos has biblical strength. Unbelievable power there. She drove through that brack. She pushed Sarah 
right to the pad through the top roll block. Nothing that Sarah could do there. She had no purchase in the hand and wrist. And that's the difference between these two ladies today. Final seconds of the 90 seconds between poles ticking down. And girl power in the crowd tonight. Great to see. And 10 seconds. Girl power at the table right Ten now seconds. in the order of Gabby Vasconcellos with a 2-0 lead here, Neil, in this feature match, trying to make it a clean sweep against Sarah Backman. Watching Sarah Backman in the build-up to this match, the feats of strength in her training that she has performed, few people could possibly have imagined go, this kind of dominance from any female puller. Gabriela Vasconcellos has put on such an impressive performance. I can't, you know, you can't overstate it. Crazy strength. Look at that. She's a look at that. She's yes. stonewalling Backman, allowing Sarah to pull at her and then gently yeah. squeezes down. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the World Arm Wrestling League, Gabriela Vasconcelos. Welcome, Iron Angel. This is a dominant force. Who will come to challenge Gabriela Vasconcelos? Statement made in Atlanta from that girl. Wow! Clean sweep and the Iron Angel just that. She's got She's the so cash cool. and the victory here in Atlanta. And her husband there in her corner as we look back at the final pin, Neil. We do, and look at the joint of Sarah Backman. She's pulling so hard, she's nearly dislocating her own wrist. And when you see that kind of action from a puller of that level, Gabriela Vasconcelos remained completely composed. She is on a crazy level of strength right now. We'll hear from the winner momentarily. Let's now get down. Gracious in defeat with Jason's own Fisher, Sarah Backman. Sarah, you're one of the strongest women on this planet. And after that match, I heard you say, oh, so strong. So strong. <laughs> I mean, can yeah. you describe what this was like for you tonight? It's like hitting a wall. <laughs> uh, but now I have a goal. She's in the way. Uh, you know, to be the best. So I'm chasing you, Gabby. <laughs> I want to rematch in a year or so. Well, I think we all would love to see that. Absolutely. You're someone who, I mean, you have held hammers before. You have been a champion. You've been in and out of this sport. Are you refocused on arm wrestling? Is this your goal? Oh, for sure. It's my biggest passion. So I'm back 100%. Uh, this is just my first step in the right direction. And yeah. Watch out. <laughs> All right, well, we will. We're glad to have you back, Sarah. Thank you for spending some time with us. But let's give it up right now for Gabby. She's posing on social media. She's already gone viral. Gabby, come up here. Congratulations. Awesome. Now, how did you keep your cool, how did you keep stay focused after those two fouls? You thought you had won the first round yeah. two different times. That could take a lot of people out of it. How were you able to stay collected? Uh, after the first match, when I felt her arm for the first time in a long time, I knew that actually uh, if I could bring her to my side, my arm, I was strong enough to beat her. So that first big dose of adrenaline went out and then I could control myself because I was super nervous at the beginning. And then everything was back together in my head. So I felt good. Well, clearly you did, clearly. You are so strong and so poised. What does this win mean for you tonight, but also what is the message that you're sending to all the female arm wrestlers around the world who are watching right now? Uh, well, I was very honored to pull Sarah because she brings a lot of attention to us female arm wrestlers. And I think that she made me go to another level to keep focused, to keep training, because. Once you reach some level, it, it's easy to be in comfort zone. Yeah. And she completely put out of it. And so I thank her for that. And I think that I'm super happy for the women and wrestlers that she's back. And I think they all should feel motivated to be someday in the stage too. And we welcome ever M wrestlers. <laughs> Amazing. You sound so friendly right now, welcoming them up here, but not so friendly when they get to the table. 
That was incredible. Congratulations, Gabby. We're glad to have you here in the WAL. Ben, Neil, back to you. All right, Jason, thanks, and congrats to the winner, Gabby Vasconcelos. 3-0 victory. Welcome to the WAL as she gets the cash and the win here tonight. Still to come, Wagner, Bordelano, and No Limits, Devin Larratt in our main event. The hammer will be on the line between Cataret and Todd. That's our fifth and final match. But up next, we will see another Brazilian, another newcomer to the WAL. Yes, Batman. yes, Ben Giant Jesus goes next. The UEFA Champions League. The pressure to fight, the winter, the snow, the rain, the world at your palms. We're trying to feel everything. Oh, what's it going? The UEFA Champions League. Watch on TNT. Stream on BR Live. A hero looks to inspire through his passion. Honor, integrity, respect. That's what one championship is about. This is awesomeness. One championship, the home of martial arts. Stream on BR Live. Two non-arm wrestlers that I'd like to see arm wrestle. Oh, that's a tough one. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Two big names that everybody recognizes. Sylvester Stallone and Arnold. Just the classic matchup of the old school action stars I love. You know, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant going at him, you know, when he, if he was alive. I'm a big Rock fan and a John Cena fan, so super cool to see those two. The Rock and Brian Shaw. The Rock, you know, he's in the movies, he looks huge. Brian Shaw, who's a strong man. The guy is, you know, as strong as they come, just overall body strength. Maybe the Bosa brothers from Ohio State. It'd be like a family grudge. Former world's strongest man, Eddie Hall, and Shaquille O'Neal. I just think with his long arm and big hand and crazy leverage, it could be an interesting match. Eddie Hall and the Mountain Man himself go at her. Just two big brute strengths, bone to bone, just to see see what the outcome would be. I think would be Wonder Woman. I don't know her name, but I love that movie. I would like to see anybody running for public office arm wrestle each other, and that's how you determine who gets elected. In every country, in every state, everywhere. Arm wrestle. I gotta be honest, I really like Jamie Sheldon's idea. I know Jamie's watching. That's a great, great idea and an interesting piece there of tape to listen to. Neil Pickup, former three-time world champ. My name is Ben Holden, Jason Zone Fisher with us, Justin Roberts, all of our great crew. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. We're having a great time, Neil. And let's take a look back at the moving pictures from the first three matches we've had here tonight. We lit up from the get-go here, Ben. Incredible stuff, I can't wait. Well, it opened up with Tony Katowski and Sam Harris. That was match one. You know what? Tony Katowski started so well, he put the grind on Sam early in the match. But a test of character once again, the second time this season for Harris. And he stood up. That young man stood up and he fought his way back. Not enough tonight for Katowski, but he isn't finished yet. And then the bull came in and ran a dominant a favorite of a champion so close lit him up in the first round he did and rocked his confidence badly but once you kick the bear and it comes out of the cave <laughs> careful because it will literally rip your head off and rob vigent jr tonight stamped it down look at the champion there as he roared his authority and the, respect, to the, middleweight the division. respect there is awesome to see and then the hammer neil so similar guys rob bidget jr is going to take some beating in the middleweight division mate this was the one i wanted to see yes. so bad and you know you see so many different ways arm wrestling matches go down and now and again you see a performance from an athlete that just makes you give your head a wobble and think what the hell did I just watch? <laughs> it's difficult to understand that anybody could run through Sarah Bachman in the way that Gabriela Vasconcelos just did. I am not sure there is anybody breathing that can beat that lady. Wow. She is ridiculously powerful. Irina Makieva, are you watching? Makieva, come out of hiding, yeah. come back to the game. You got a challenger right here. We saw Backman during our break. She looked up at us and she said she is so strong, just oh. incredibly strong. And the fans are awaiting our next match. Let's get backstage to Jason Zone Fisher. Jay. 
I'm backstage with Monster Michael Todd. About a year ago, we were here in Atlanta. You defeated Devin Larratt, and you have not been looking back since. You've been taking this hammer everywhere that you go with you. What is it going to take to retain the hammer here tonight? Jerry is one of the bigger guys on the roster. Uh, he's the only guy since the Super Series got started that's handed me a loss. I'm the strongest I've ever been in my life, and this hammer's going back to Arkansas. Now, you mentioned Jerry's the only one who has defeated you. You lost on fouls in Cleveland last year in one of the most epic matches in the history of the WAL. What did you learn from that match that you will apply tonight in a rematch against Big Daddy? Yeah, I definitely won't be wiping sweat out of my eyes this time. But, uh, yeah, so it's, it's going to be a great match. Like I said, uh, hammer staying with me. All right, you're focused and you're not giving away any of your secrets. I can see it. All right, well, good luck. I'm going to let you go prepare because it's right around the corner. But right now, we got another great match ahead. Ben, back to you. Thanks so much, Jason. And thanks to the monster for taking some time. He takes that hammer everywhere, right? Yeah, he does. Michael Todd is the kind of athlete that when he wins something like that, he wants to let the world know who the champion is. He's a proud arm wrestler. He's a proud man. And he's every right to be because he's the very best in the world. He certainly is, and we're going to go in this match, Neil. We're going to go from the right, as we've seen in all the Superman Showdown Series matches. This one is going to be left-handed between Wagner Bortolato and a man we all know very well, the face of it, Devin Larratt. As the World Arm Wrestling League begins to showcase the left arm, it's right that we bring over the biggest names in left arm competition. And Wagner, the giant Jesus Bortolato, is exactly that man multiple WF world champion. He's facing the most famous arm wrestler in the world, our very own Devon Larratt. And this one will be an absolute barnstormer. One more thing I gotta add, he looks different. Shaved his head, it's a new look, Devon Larratt. Yeah, you got complete Here's contrast. The <laughs> you can see Devon there with that long hair, but he was outdone in a hair competition. You can't <laughs> beat Bortolato in a hairy competition. In a meritocracy based on the growth of hair, Wagner Bortolato would be God. This man is hairy to the max. So Devin Larratt served 20 years in the Canadian Army Special Forces. Take a look at this as we go at home with Devin Larratt. My name is Devin Larratt. I live in Ottawa, Canada. I'm 40 years old. I pull in the 225 pound class. I've always loved fighting. I've always been drawn to it since I was a kid. In, in 2001, I came to uh, Canadian Special Forces. Did it really on, on a whim, just walking by the recruiting office and walked in. I thought that the best contribution I could make was to fight for civilization. He's done seven tours in Afghanistan. Big day ahead of me. I need to look my best. Sometimes when you're faced with your own mortality, you get a little bit better at living the rest of your life. Skydiving for me is a release. Love that letting go of the plane sensation. The instant when I'm even starting to think about letting go of that plane, I have to get rid of all my fear. That is a beautiful thing, to be able to free yourself of that entrapment. You know, the joy that you can feel in flying through the air, the adrenaline, you know, falling through the sky, it's an amazing feeling. This type of training improves my mindset for my arm wrestling. You're forced to keep as much of your mind active as possible. Your life depends on it. It forces me to think while I'm under stress. There's a lot of stress, you know, you, you think you might die, you know. You know, in arm wrestling, you really have to make that switch, you know. You have to turn into something else uh, to be really good at the table. You have to let go of what you are in everyday life, and you have to be, become something else. And it's the same thing in skydiving. You have to do something that you don't really want to do, but once you get there, you can, you can really let go of everything. What a great day. Got no skydive. So I went on leave last year just to pursue arm wrestling fully. Every day, I'm training for this moment. Especially with this year off, he will literally train all day long. I just blew through a dude's hand. To win at the WAL, it means you're a bad dude. It's the biggest pro league that there's ever been. To win it the first year, I'm a part of history. It's a big deal for me. I mean, that's an awesome look at Devin Larratt. Very interesting guy. And here's the ratings card. What do you make of it, Neil? 
Yeah, the ratings card tells a story. Very, very few times do we see Devon Larratt come to the table and be lacking power. Right now, you're looking at a man with incredible structure. He wins that game. But if you look at the hand and wrist card, card if you look at endurance card, both those areas fall back to no limits. And I think that's what he's going to try to do tonight. The other important one is the counter moves. Devon Larratt has options. He may need to use a lot of them tonight to get the victory. As I like to say, it's on the internet. It's got to be true. All kidding aside, our fan poll. Any surprise with that? You know what? The fan poll comes out in favor of the guy who's active on social media. Everybody knows Devon Larratt. Yeah. When you look at Giant Jesus, this guy lives in the middle of nowhere and everybody's never heard of him. It's no surprise that most Bigfoot sightings coincide with when this guy goes on camping holidays. <laughs> Down to Justin Roberts for the introductions. It is now time for our second feature bout of the evening. A best of five left-handed match between two of the best left-handed arm wrestlers on the planet. <laughs> Approaching the table first, he stands at six feet, two inches tall, and weighed in at two, 197 pounds. He's competing out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. He has dominated the super heavyweight division, beating some of the biggest names in the sport along the way. He is one of the most animated and passionate competitors on the circuit. He is Jack Jesus Wagner Portolano. A scary individual, mildly crazy, and I can tell you this, I have nightmares about this fella and going to prison with him. Can you imagine that dude climbing off the top bunk when you've just got sentenced to eight months in prison for riding your bike without lights? I don't want Terrifying. to. And his opponent, standing at six feet, six inches tall, and weighing in at two, 177 pounds, competing out of Big Island, Ontario, with an outstanding record of 34 wins and only four losses. He is a fan favorite and multiple time WAL champion, considered by many to be the best ever to pull and a future Hall of Famer. He is No Limits, Devin Lillard. table. This is the biggest version of Devon we've ever seen. 277 pounds of him. He's getting bigger, he's getting stronger, and he wants to make a statement tonight on this left arm. But in Wagner Bortolato, he's facing another giant. Bortolato looks ready. He's the bigger man in terms of weight, and there's no body fat on Wagner Bortolato. This guy has got the body fat of a pool ball. Well said. Cash on the table. To the table. Left-handed match here, one of our feature matches. This leads up to our main event. This should be fun, Neil. Devin has already started the mind game. Open up, open up, open up. No, He's no, trying no. to impose okay. his will. He's okay. trying to stand up to Alton. When they went to shake hands there, yeah. he tried to drag Bortolato down, down, off down, center. Down, but let down, me tell down. you, Bortolato's grip down. is insane. I shook hands with this dude earlier okay. today in the hotel, and I felt my goddamn yeah. shoelaces tighten. Hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll tell him. He... Listen. Thumb, then I say hand, go. Remember, thumb, he doesn't hand, speak go. English. Portuguese is his native tongue, and Wagner Bortolato is so structurally strong, skeletally strong. He wants to make this match arm on arm. Devon surely went, wow, big drive there. Bortolato not tries to destroy the entire building. Quite the showman. The thing is, Portolato is like this all the time. Yeah. When you meet him outside, away from the arm wrestling table, he's the quietest, most humble, endearing guy you could ever meet. The kind of guy you'd, you know, invite into your house to sleep with your wife. But when he gets to an arm wrestling table, he is ferocity unleashed. 
It's his passion, it's his love. It's already started, and you can see as Jordy Larratt yes. gets a big smile on her face there that she can see her husband's Let mind games yep. has already started. He needs to be careful here because he's got a tiger by the tail. Yeah. If he allows Bortolato to people. connect, Devin, come down I'll down tell you what, he's going to know he's in an arm wrestling match. Yep. Just relax. Let him do his job. Just let him do his job. Bortolato. Brazil's finest, incredibly powerful individual. Terremoto. This is a man Terremoto. who broke Devin. Michael Todd's I read my mind. Broke Come his on. arm. 2010, you said this morning when you were giving me a little background on him at, at an arm wars event. That's correct. What, yes. it, what it says about Devin, Bortolato is that his here. joints, Tighten his structure is just so down, powerful. He's like a like a giant blacksmith. Just mm -hmm. got that form power, you know? Country oh, strong. strong. Yeah, yeah, mate. This guy was nine when he was born. <laughs> here we go, oh, Neil. Massive drive. Sets that. But look at that from Lara. He's got the horse power and he stays with it. Bortolato trying to reconnect with that wrist. Needs to be patient, stay with it and gather his arm. Doesn't want to burn out. And this is a bleed now. Yep. Bortolato is from Brazil. He's very familiar with the Anaconda. And Devin Larratt right now is an Anaconda. He is. He'll wait for the move. He'll wait for the mistake. He will squeeze. He will tighten. And he'll try to choke the life out of Bortolato. Wagner doesn't know he's beaten. And this he hits unreal. with ferocity and, and chaos. Big drive. Oh. Devin Larratt. Oh. behind his arm and finishes with a press as the sweat pours off the face of Wagner Bortolato. Ferocity in that first round, so visceral. Longest pull of the night. Okay. So far, 37 seconds. It seemed a lot longer than that. But 37 is what we're told. What a dad move. Of chaos. That was all about. Look, in arm wrestling, you've got two types of arm wrestling. You've got a predator. Wagner Bortolato is a predator. You've got a hunter. Devin Larratt is that hunter. And he brought the sniper rifle tonight. He's already back up, ready to go, yeah, is Larratt. Yeah, yeah, he's doing round. that. He learned a lesson from Michael Todd. Yeah. He's trying to call out Wagner, question Wagner's manhood. Yeah. Trying to call him back up and make him come to the table. Wagner needs to put the blinkers on and forget that. Shut yeah. out the noise. Play into the crowd. The crowd's into it with Devin. 30 seconds. Take your time, Bortolato, because if you go back up there now, it will be bad news. Yes. Lara wants the bleed. He's trying to utilize the weapon of choice to yet, choke Devin. his opponent's life out, to yep. make sure he takes away that explosivity. The weapon of Wagner is explosivity. Devin's talking to him out there. Oh, yeah. He'll use everything he can. Trying to get into his mind, trying to make yep. Bortolato come back to the table early. If I was Bortolato, I'd be thinking of ways to come up late. <laughs> Little prayer there, and he's back up. one nothing lead for Devin Larratt in this left-handed feature match. I love it. Bortolato trying oh, to okay. rev himself up. Yep. Close your thumbs. Needs to get some connection in this match. Hand. Needs to land on top of Devin. Devin stretching out. And you know what? In that first round, it looked to me like Devin ran very close to a jump start. He was away so early. Big drive. And this time, Bortolato stays a little tighter. But look at the face of yes. Devin Larry. He knows he's right in this match. And he starts to apply that pressure. There's the squeeze. Now he'll apply up pressure into Wagner's hand at that point. Wagner needs to tighten, needs to stay with his arm. Don't expose that hand and wrist. The leverage, the height and length of the forearm of Devon gives him so many options. And he'll try to make 
Just minor adjustments as the match progresses. Test difference. Oh, he's going for a dad move. He's moving a down to the move, wrist. Huh? He's he trying told to get us that this morning. Moves down and tries to yeah. grip the wrist of Bortolato. Yep. That's a brave move with Bortolato's strength in the joint. Long, grinding, brutal pull. 45 seconds of absolute the pain, but you can see there the fatigue factor yes. that it puts onto any opponent who faces Devon Lara. Yep. He's got the gas tank then. Two nothing lead for no limits, as you call him the Canadian Ferrari, and Jody Larratt always cheering on her husband. Jody feels like she's going to go home with a little more money. It was pretty good, right? <laughs> At this point, I, I we're working on that. He's one win away from it. I'm trying to get Bart to set me. You know what? Okay, do it. It's going good, huh? A little master class of arm wrestling from the Devin Larratt there. He uh, the has found ways to draw Bortolato into a dogfight in positions that he didn't realize he was in a trap. Wagner was in a trap from the moment the match stopped and he baited him. Devon allowed Wagner to walk into those traps. Look at the hand and wrist positioning there. That illustrates the confidence of Devon. And he uses that joint strength once he feels the strength level of Bortolato drop. Yeah. He allowed him to get to a manageable level of strength and then transition to the press. Great arm wrestling from a fabulous arm wrestler. The dad move finished him off. You know what? He wanted to move his hand down onto Wagner's wrist because he wanted to test the strength, the joint strength of the Brazilian. The big difference between these two men right now is experience in this format, yep. is adrenaline Wagner. dump, all those factors it done and then we can it's party hard after. to get away from. It's hard to counter. He was actually a good guy. He didn't say Canada. 10 seconds. You hear Bart Wood, Bortolato taking every single second and then some. As he should. Yeah. To the table. No question. Summoned by Bart to the table now. And Devin Laren trying to make it a clean sweep here. There's no fake in this guy. There's no backward step in this guy. He comes up there and he'll leave everything on the table. Bortolato will go out on his shield. He'll give every ounce. But I just don't think it's enough here. He's now got a massive level of fatigue and see him stretching, trying to push that lactic acid out of his arm. And, and it won't go away. He needs to, oh, he needs more chalk because he's sweating like a chip. Yep. Incredible amount of energy. Incredible amount of effort put in by Wagner. He couldn't have tried any harder. It's just he, he ran into bear traps from start to finish. That man is that good. He really is. I mean, you know, you get. Keep this equal Devin's right got his critics out Slide there, across. let me tell you. But Wagner, you can't up. overlook the yeah, fact that Devin Lara is a very, very complete arm wrestler. He's also an extremely strong arm wrestler. And in terms of <laughs> physicality, he's an incredibly difficult guy to deal with. He's got all the weapons he needs long forearm, tremendous joint strength, good balance technique. He can pull in any position. The top Jim. roll, the hook, the press, right. even the king's move. Yep. And now the dad's move. Oh, and now the dad's. <laughs> you can look at the face of Bortolato there. Yeah. He's oh, exhausted. You're moving up higher. Here, Wagner. I gotta have you. Up, was over up, 50 up, up. seconds. What are you doing? First equal. one was it's not close to 40. Well, it feels weird because it's fair now. <laughs> it's not even a bit fair. Huh. Here we go. A little bit of banter there Straight between. Up. Yes. Devin and Bort. Yes. You know what, I don't think it matters for Devon now. I think he can relax. I think uh, he's burned enough energy now out of his opponent that really he, he can have his way with, uh, with yeah. Wagner now in terms of technique. He can pick his poison. Great attempt from Mike. Tried hard. It's good. I got no, no, no. It doesn't matter. Ah, it was over. It was over. Just sit that elbow down. Come on. Huge hit from Wagner, but it was early it's there. Okay, yes. If I stop the match, I'm happy. Come on. Open him. <laughs> elbow down. As I said, Devon, no, he, he can feel. He yeah. can feel oh, the yeah. power's ebbed away. Hello, and he's not too concerned now. I'll set you set me down. Let's go. Square up. Okay. Hey. 
Close your thumbs. Devin just saying, set me in the dot. Yeah, yeah. Set me yeah. Down. I caught that. Big drive again from Wagner. He exploded out of the blocks, trying to use that strap to finish the game. But it'll be very, very hard to finish Devin Lark from there. But I'll tell you what, he's about to. He's about to, and there's the pin. Wow! Don't mess with Giant Jesus. You let this guy jump on top of you. Oh, <laughs> Wagner Bortolato just went nuts. He got a slight shink of daylight there because Devin let out too much rope. He let out the rope. He let out the rope. Well, I'll tell you what, Wagner Bortolato hasn't read the script and he took that pin on pure determination. Yep. I just want more TV time. 100%. <laughs> Bortolato gas, but he gets that one to stay alive, making it 2-1. You know, look at this on the replay. Devin Larratt could have finished that match. If he'd have yeah. wanted to take the pin, oh, yeah. he could have done. But he fed him rope, he fed him rope. And when you do that with a man with this much joint strength, if he gets connected, he will make you pay. And you can see we went from comfortable to holy, what am I tied to? Yeah. And there was the pin. Yep. Giant Jesus lands a pin and goes completely bananas. <laughs> Jody, yeah. Jody's like, oh, you let it go too far, mate. <laughs> Play it with right. fire, and you may way. get burned. He came all the way from Brazil. He's a really good guy. He's a really good dude. Down. He's a really good dude. Ah, you know what he really is? No, I, mean, I know. Wagner Bortolato is a lovely person. Yeah. Just the most humble individual. He is really gassed. Still alive, though. 2-1. Yeah. Down to 12 seconds left on it, Neil. I expect uh, I expect Devin to play a little less games now. I, mate. I'm I think. right there with you. I think this might be quick. Yeah, I think I think he'll uh, he'll probably uh, reduce the amount of rope that he allows Wagner to have yes. pretty significantly. You know? we'll All see. right, both men back to the table. Wagner and down 2-1. Devin Larratt in this left-hand feature match, trying to knock him out in four. But I'm actually happy to see Wagner get something in this match, you know? He deserved it, just from the, the sheer effort that he's put in there. They offered him the strap, he said no. To the table. Hey, Wagner Bortolato hasn't read any script here. He doesn't know he's out this match. He wants to win back. And one thing you can tell from that last ball, Bortolato is prepared to leave it all on the table. He ran into that with material, with tendon, with ligament. You know, he's he, he's putting it in there hard. Devon's got to make sure that he doesn't get carried away. Right. Just calm down a little and keep control. Don't let this guy get out of out of control on you. Yep. He will hurt you. Big drive again there. Devon's counter couldn't finish though. Goes again and can't finish. Very close that time, and I think that was there it is, Neil. Yeah. yeah. Took care of it. Exactly as we expected, Ben. Yeah. He, uh, he felt enough from Wagner to think, you know what? This isn't a guy I'm going to give any more rope. No. Not tonight. Let's, no. uh, let's put it away. Wise move. And you never know, Devin Larratt may have just earned himself a few more pounds because tonight, yep. no Kings move. He went in various positions. We saw the inside techniques. We saw the top roll. We saw the range of technique that this fabulous arm wrestler can put onto people. And Devin Larratt, make no mistake about it, is exactly as advertised. This guy can really pull. If you yes. need the match to go in any position, he'll accommodate you. And he's got a lot yeah. of power there. He's got the top roll, he's got the hook, he's got the press, he's got the whole package. He certainly does, and he's standing by in the pit, victorious with Jason Zone Fisher. That was Devin, this match was hyped on social media. You've never faced fun. Wagner before. I know you really wanted to go head to head with him. Why did you want to go up against him? It's been over 10 years in the making, you know, Wagner multiple times world champion from a completely different culture, from Brazil, from South America. And uh, it gives us a chance to open up the left-hand division. So for me, it's, it's just it's a lot of fun. Wagner's a great competitor. 
And we... <laughs> you guys certainly know how to put on a show. Where do you get this from? When, is it just when you get on the table, you, you become possessed? Well, the most important thing about life is loving what you do. If you love what you do, it's very easy. And that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to pull Wagner, because it's so obvious that he loves to arm wrestle. I love to arm wrestle, so for us, it's like our paradise, you know? We go to war, and at the end of it, no concussions. Good times. Good times, especially when you're winning. That was an amazing show here tonight. You are one of the stars of the sport and of the WAL. We have one match left in this season, Jerry versus Michael Todd. Do you feel that you should have been in this match? You put those guys up against me tonight, I feel so hot, I'll kill both of them, one after another. But, but that's okay, that's okay. Season opener, I'm gonna crack whoever wins tonight. Wow, okay. <laughs> Well, we got the heavyweight match coming up next, the championship, but you're already calling your shot. You want the winner. It, who do you want more? Who do you think's going to win, and who do you want to face? Well, one thing's for sure is I never want to pull a loser. So, you know, I, I actually think that tonight, even though I love both these competitors, they're the top, both these guys deserve to be in this championship match. Uh, I got I to gotta put the edge towards the reigning champ, Michael Todd. Jerry Cataret's got the heart of a warrior. If anybody can do it, it's his style and it's his heart that's gonna come through. I expect a war. Well, I cannot wait to see that war. It's about to go down. Devin Larratt, No Limits, congratulations. Just as powerful with the left arm as you are with the right. Ben, Neil, back to you. Thank you, Jason. Thanks to Devin Larratt taking some time as always. The winner in that left-hand feature match. We're not done. The final match, as Jason said, here in the WAL season in 2019 for the hammer between Jerry Cataret and Michael Todd. WAL 506. I think it's long overdue. This is one of the best Epic. matches I've ever witnessed in my life. Last one went seven minutes. Wow. This is one of the longest rounds I've ever seen. It doesn't matter where this match goes. A bloodbath, a bloodbath. I'm gonna sweep this thing. Cataret is literally pouring sweat. It's gonna be blood, sweat, and tears. This is epic, this is history. Bring your A-game, because that's what I'm bringing. Who wants it more? I'm taking the hardware. This hammer's staying with me. The UEFA Champions League. The pressure to fight, the winter, the snow, the rain, the world at your palms, we're trying to feel everything. Oh, what's it going The UEFA Champions League. Watch on TNT. Stream on BR Live. A hero looks to inspire through his passion. Honor, integrity, respect. That's what one championship is about. This is awesomeness. One championship, the home of martial arts. Stream on BR Live. And welcome back here inside of Turner Studio here in Atlanta, Georgia. WAL 506, the final match of the season coming up momentarily. Everyone's flexing out there. WAL 506 Atlanta is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, the official sports bar of the World Arm Wrestling League. Back up in our office for the night alongside the former three-time world champ, Neil Pickup, Ben Holden with you. And one more to go, Neil. Yeah, and it's the one. This is for the heavyweight championship of the world. We've seen it before, and it was an absolute career ender. We saw pins of seven minutes in length. These guys don't have a backward step in them, and I'm sure they're going to try and prove that for all these people and ourselves tonight in here. Let's have a look at the tail of the tape, Let's guys. Let's do it. What do you make of it? You know what? Both these men are giants. Jerry Cataret, a huge individual at 327 pounds. He's giving away a little bit of leverage, but this isn't going to come down to structure. It isn't going to come down to size, to physicality. These guys have met many times before. They know everything there is to know about their opponent. What it's going to come down to is who arrived here tonight and had the most desire to take home the win. That's what this match is about. All right, let's take a closer look at both men. Let's start with a man that's holding the hammer right now, the monster Michael Todd, and what makes him 
the arm wrestler he is, what makes him so tough to beat, Neil? Let's do this thing. Michael Todd, one of the men that will break his arm to win. He's made that claim and he's backed it up. He yeah. snapped his arm in 2010 just because he was unwilling to move backwards in a match. Michael told me as we walked over to the venue tonight, for me to lose this match, Neil, my arm will have to break. Yeah. Other than that, I go home with the hammer. That's a big claim, and he doesn't make that kind of claim idly. All right, let's take a look now at Jerry Cataret. They had the seven minute and 20 second poll. That wasn't even to win the poll. It was to get a restart in Cleveland last year when Michael Todd had a, bo a bone broken in his hand during that poll. Yeah, let's be honest, the bone was damaged in his hand during the match, and it was damaged by the Ginger Dread Man. Yes. Jerry Cataret puts a world of hurt on his opponents. He doesn't care where the match goes. He pulls in an unorthodox style. He pulls in a horrible position. He, within his strategy, within his technique, is the opportunity to make his opponent feel horrible. He's a terrible guy to arm wrestle. It's a bad experience. And we look at the card there. What strikes you is the power rating on both these guys in the nines and above. Both men are really similar. They've got strength in the same areas. The power, the press. I'll tell you where else they're similar. The heart. Who wants yes. it most? Michael feels he's the champion and wants to underline it. Jerry feels like this is overdue and he should be champion right now. Yeah, he wanted to be here last year, but he wasn't. Let's go to Hot Springs, Arkansas at home with a monster, Michael Todd. My sheer disgust for losing will outweigh my opponent's desire to win every time. That's it. I hate the way it feels to lose, so I just choose not to. I am Monster Michael Todd from Hot Springs, Arkansas. 34-time national champion and 18-time world champion. As far as me being a competitive person, I was a martial artist as a kid, had a black belt by the time I was 14, and I was competing in the adult class and when winning. So if you don't like losing, you become pretty competitive. I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for my wife. We're actually together 24-7. She's on me all the time to make sure that I come in at peak performance. Rebecca and I also run a transformation business. So not only is this our private gym that we train in, it's also our private gym where we train clients. My name is Rebecca Todd, better known as Mrs. Monster. And my main job is to make sure he gets all of his nutrition in. He has to eat every two hours, and most of those are on me. That's a lot of cooking. Taking care of the monster is a full-time job. After you're an arm wrestler and you become an arm wrestler, you feel everything that uses your hands and your wrists and your forearms. If I'm outside working on a tree, chainsawing, logging, riding a motorcycle, ATV, and I'm always gonna find a way to use my hands and wrist and forearm because I'm always preparing for that next battle. Michael is a fierce competitor. And going into every single competition in these last six years that I've been with him, as soon as he steps up to that table, you can see the change happen. They say, ready, go, and he's a totally different animal. He's the monster. The fuel for me to win this match is to be the WAL champion. I'm not here to be second. All right, Neil, as I say again, the internet, it's gotta be true. Do you agree with this fan poll from Instagram? You know what, I, I do, I've got Michael okay. in this one. I think uh, he's got something, a little bit of a desire inside himself that Jerry may not have, and Jerry's just come off a tough one. Yeah. I'll tell you this, Michael Todd will take a real win from that because he takes so much hatred online <laughs> for utilizing the King's move. Jerry Cataret's got to look at that and think, Jesus, I've just lost a fan poll to the most hated man on the internet. <laughs> I need to change my goddamn aftershave. All right, that's our fan poll, and let's now go to our pit announcer, Justin Roberts, for the main event introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for your main event of the evening. 
in Atlanta, Georgia, it is now time for your main event of the evening. A best of five match for the prestige of being the baddest arm wrestler in the world and for the WAL Heavyweight Championship. Introducing to the pit first, the challenger. He stands at six feet, one inch tall, and weighed in at 327 pounds, with a record of 25 wins and only five losses. Known for his incredible power, he is one of the only people to have defeated the current champion. Fighting out of Rio home in Massachusetts, he is Big Daddy Cherry Cataract. He's been waiting for this one. He got a win over the monster last time they met, and he feels like this shot is long, long overdue. It's time, Jerry. And his opponent, standing at six feet, three inches tall, weighing in at 268 pounds, with a record of 15 wins against only three losses. Competing out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. He's been unstoppable in the toughest of the WAL classes and had huge wins in WAL 406 and WAL 503. He has won titles all over the world and is one bad man. He is the WAL heavyweight champion. He is Monster Michael Todd. Ladies and gentlemen, monsters are real, and they live in the World Arm Wrestling League. Monster Michael Todd, the heavyweight champion of the world, strides into the arena with the hammer. It is on an opportunity for legitimacy, an opportunity for redemption against the Ginger Dread Man. Last time out, he lost. He felt that was a wrong. He wants to make it a right. And here comes the There's a monster in the house, indeed. This monster's real, and he's in the pit, ready to go here. Trying to win yet another hammer here tonight, Neil Pickup. And does he look focused? My oh, yeah. My word. A look of thunder etched on the face of Monster Michael Todd. By contrast, Jerry Cadaret looking calm as Bart Wood calls these two giants to the table. Will we see a repeat of that epic, epic encounter? Last Seven minutes, man. Yeah. 720 last year in Cleveland. Right and uh, damage done there. We'd like these guys to stay healthy throughout this time. And that's a great sign because yep. both men yep. Didn't look like they were moving very far there. <laughs> we go to the straps, tie these big boys together. Yep, strap don't lie. Seven minutes and 20 seconds. You can hear, you can a hear pin that drop respect. in here, yeah. You can hear that respect. It's, when you get two guys of this level, I think the, the people in the crowd here can sort of feel that aura. They can yeah. feel oh, the yeah. occasion. I mean, look at that. We can too. Yeah. That's the lady that put seven grand on it. <laughs> <laughs> Unconfirmed. <laughs> Got a rep. Such a unorthodox arm wrestler. And Michael's made his name of late, utilizing the king's move. He doesn't really do a great deal to a presser. A dead wrist press jumps on top of the kings and can really do it damage. Go! Big drive! Whoa! Coming. I know I didn't. I didn't either. 1 0 lead, Cataract. What an unbelievable start. Good time to go, good. From Jerry Cataract. Jerry said he came ready for this one. Stay <laughs> strong. Yeah, Rob Bidget Genie he needing to catch Jerry there. Yeah. That's a hell of a catch. The Mass Boys helping each other out. 
So Cataract with a 1-0 lead, thanks to the strap, and he just took care of business. Look at the big smile on the, the face of his wife breaking there, and his little boy watching. By contrast, the wife of Monster Michael Todd looking like she's just seen a ghost. Yeah. It was a big one, and it had red hair. <laughs> Back to the table they go. Not wasting any time, these two men for the hammer, Neil. Jerry Cataret, what a huge man. This guy does not skip breakfast. So much power sets that leg against the table. We'll find out now if Michael was napping in that first round. No side pressure. A little bit like Rob Bidgent Jr. He needs to wake up. Woo, big drive. Back to it. Yeah. We'll slip, we'll go to the strap. He got more connection there. He didn't run as hard back. He ran a little more to the side. We'll see it on the replay. I think Michael actually lost some some of the adhesion on his elbow, maybe popped off the back there, but it means nothing. We're gonna get tied together again. We'll see it on the replay. Just watch this hit. He hits more to the side, but that traction on the elbow was lost. There it is. Oh, this is the this is the pin, yeah. Oh, is that good there? You know what? Okay. And then here's an overhead of it. And that's such commitment from Jerry. I mean, there is just nowhere to go. As Michael tried to pronate, as he tried to find a way to put the brakes on, Jerry just shut out the light. He made that match happen in a phone box. Okay, gentlemen, don't move around. Strap applied. Title match, Jerry Cataret. One nothing lead on the hammer holder, Michael Todd. Michael, no side pressure, no side. Right here to find a response now. Champions' response required. Yes. Close your hands. Go. Big drive there from Todd. This time he gets some purchase. The elbow is on the pad firmly, and he's starting to apply the walk onto Jerry. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been here before with these big boys. Yes, we have. And Jerry Cataret is starting to put the grind onto Mike, but this time you can see that Michael Todd's face is very different. He's relaxed, he's calm. This is all in the strategy. He's now engaged the King's move. He's pronated hard, but I'll tell you what, that's actually more of a defensive top roll. He hasn't really hit his King's yet. He's just led back and he's looking to apply that pressure into Jerry. Jerry is trying to time Michael. He's trying to just make sure that he doesn't expend too much energy until the right time. You'll see the clock is counting away. We're up around the 52nd mark and both these men are still pretty relaxed. What we do know about them is that both men are conditioned for the long game. But yes. Michael is gaining ground now, Ben. Yes. He is Rolling doing that as we're now at a minute and ten in this pull. Now Michael will try to transition soon. He'll feel for the gap. And when he feels the breath, if Jerry lets up the pressure, Michael will jump behind his arm and he'll press through for the finish. That's what he's looking for. He's climbing. And this is a top roll. There's no king's move there. Yeah. He's in a defensive leg back top roll. He's been training that extensively and he's watching. He's waiting for that bump. He's waiting for the mistake. If he feels it from Cataret, he will jump behind his arm. And I'll tell you what, Michael's trying to put the bleed on Jerry. Yeah. Jerry is working very, very hard here, and Michael is not. Yep. Little climb, little adjustment. Michael working that angle. Great look making, at it there. Yeah, and he's making sure that he doesn't get his elbow into a position where Jerry can expose it. That's better from Jerry. Feels a little bit of a relaxation there in Michael, and he punished him for it. Michael adjusts. Real technical match from Mike. Jerry is just a warrior from a different planet. Two minutes and 15 seconds and counting now in this second pole with Cataret up 1-0. It's always the second round we see this happen. And I'll tell you what, Michael's feeling the pace now. Michael went from a relaxed position to a lot less relaxed in a heartbeat, but now he's gaining ground. Yeah. And watch for the transition. If Jerry breathes, Michael will sting him. Yep. And he'll sting him hard. So look at him testing, supinating, bringing his lower palm in, turning his lower palm into Jerry's arm, waiting for that little spot. It's a fraction, a heartbeat. When he feels that moment, he'll immediately transition to the press himself. But Jerry, trying to get it going, won't back off. He's just keeping that pressure applied. 
He is an absolute grinder. Over three minutes now. Ludicrous length of arm wrestling. Do you, you recall the longest you ever had in your uh, standing career? Yeah, the longest match I ever pulled in was just over nine minutes. Nine? But, yeah, but a lot of it was resting. I couldn't finish the guy and he couldn't finish me and we backed up a lot. That's not what we're seeing here. These guys, oh, Michael there went for the yes. transition, couldn't get it. Goes back to that relaxed position again. And Jerry trying to bump down again. Look at this. Both men now, the elasticity is gone. Yes. Both men are in a really, really bad place. Michael trying to extend, and Jerry's elbow was so close to coming up there. He just needs to watch that a little bit. They'll start to lose feeling in their Here's hand and foul. wrist. Yep, These guys right will now. need a well, stuntman to go to the bathroom after Down this here. match. Let me tell you, neither man will have any feeling in their hand for days. Okay, yeah. Approaching, and we've I now reached four minutes in this poll. Unbelievable career-ending death match. But what this does say is that Jerry Calaret is fit and healthy, and he's trying to finish this match and bring back some painful memories for Michael Todd. Yeah. How much endurance has Michael got? He said that his arm would need to break for him to lose this he match. He did. He told us that this morning. We know that Mike's very smart and calculating. We know that he will try to bleed his opponent in ways they don't want to be bled. But Jerry Calaret is putting some burn on that arm. No. Coming Jerry up. looking for a pin that isn't there. He's yeah. not a sign that he's fatiguing. Oh, there's the transition. Oh, there it is. Long. You breathe, you get punished. Michael Todd only needs a tiny fraction of daylight. And he, he found will it. run through it better. Cataret's going to the sleeveless. It's go time. The same thing happened again. It's broken. It's not broke with the, the tingling there. Oh boy. Hold his arms up in the corner. Sit down and hold his arms huh? up. Same thing that happened to him in Cleveland. One, one. Yeah, Michael just went over to Rebecca and said the same thing has happened again. Honey, I'm trying. He said it's not broken, but the tingling is there. In other words, it's exposed the injury. I know, but I don't know, but you know. Anybody have a tell Rubber bands. Fold it up. Fold it up. Jerry's blowing very, very hard. Yes, there. he is. You, can, the, the, you know what? The biggest factor here is going to be how much did that take out of these individuals? Who's yeah. got it for the long game? Because the power will drop exponentially now. You're not in a situation where either man is going to feel that raw top end power. So I'm not really concerned about Michael having an injury at this stage. Let's just watch it again. Most importantly, watch yeah. for the fraction of a second it takes. That breath, you, you see the breath, three, right the pressure the comes off. He's looking to transition. Easy. Boom, there. Yep. Drops it on him. As soon as any relaxation comes in, the counter press came. And Mike needs to try to make sure he doesn't go as far onto the B side. Yeah. That losing position. He's been there so many times with Jerry. And I'll tell you this, Jerry Cataret is unbelievably committed to trying to get this hammer. One of the chance last year, didn't get it. Now he's gotten it this year, 2019, tied at 1-1. We're in a similar position to where we were last Very year. Very similar. Round two lit up. I've actually forgotten what it was in terms of time, but it was another ridiculously long time. That one was around 4.45 unofficially. Devin Larratt taking it in. Yeah, Devin, Devin uh, really wants a shot at the winner of this, but I think uh, from a fan perspective, everybody would love to see that match, whoever comes through. Because both the, and we just heard 4.50 on the clock there. the official time, yes. So good job you were awake, Ben, because I'd forgotten I was keeping an eye on it. I'll tell you what, mate. We're going to find out who wants it most. Yes. We really are. 1-1. One, you can hear. You can hear what it's taking out of Jerry. <laughs> right. He literally is swallowing his tongue up there. Yep. I don't want to have a fucking stroke. Guy sounds like Come he's on, just run up go. the stairs on his hands. Yep. So the strap's That's coming on. Foul for avoiding the strap. That's not avoiding oh, he the called a foul. Yes, I, My apologies. Got one foul on Jerry. Jerry, uh, 
the, this next start could be a really, really indicative factor. Because I'll tell you what, Michael Todd seems like he's a little more relaxed. It could be mind games. He yeah. might be exhausted to the same level. Yep. But, but Michael, if you look at him, is he breathing hard? No. No. Not at all. Not at all. He's more concerned about the damage in his hand. Right. But if his power is still at any kind of level, if he can accelerate in the same way that we know he has the capability to do, mm -hmm. he might just start to pull away a little from Jerry now because Cataret's feeling it. When he injured the hand in Cleveland last year, he asked the doctor, he said, am I going to risk any permanent damage? He said, structurally, no. You could, though, with your nerves. Is what he told him go. last year. Here we go in the third Close ball, Neil. Down. Jerry's trying to close it down. Look at the angle he's assumed. He's flat. really, really tight and carved in. Gonna try to go. Whoa, one whoa, whoa, start. sweet child one of mine. One, one one. Way, Let's way go. early. Yep. Foul on each man. Yeah, you, that's, that's, that, that's a, a very, very clear sign that both men don't want to get into the Close situation we've just seen. Straight this Who up. wants it more? Close your hands. Go. And the way we go. Massive drive, and we are back in the same spot, ladies and gents. We are. Cataret is such a grinder. Jerry's just not got a backward step in him. Michael hanging on to him there, holding him up. Needs to get a little more A side, though. Needs to try and engage that arm a little bit. He's carving out, and Jerry trying to get it arm on arm. Michael looks like he's got plenty left in the tank he in that does. position. That was a pitch. Wow! I'll tell you what, oh. as Michael supernated back in there to try and connect, Jerry's timing was on point, and he took the pin. Nervous times for Michael now. Nervous, nervous times. Fabulous arm wrestling. Look at the face of Rebecca yes. Todd there. Yes, Concern on her face in a big way. Tremendous match here. Jerry Cataret one away right. from winning the hammer. <laughs> yes, indeed. And a, and a, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what, whoever wins this match, you gotta you gotta say whether you're a hater or a fan of either man, they deserve the win here. No question. No doubt about it. Look at that again. What happened in what happened in that match there was as Mike tried to sit back in and just get some purchase on Jerry's arm. Sorry, I thought we may have seen it again there, but if we do see that, as he sat in, here we, here go. we go. Now watch, he's testing and trying to get wrist on wrist. See him do it there? Yes. And he mistimed it. Boom. Jerry dropped a house on his arm. Let's look at it on the replay. It looked actually high. Was that a pin? Was it a pin? I'm not sure that was a pin. It hit. Okay, we got a contact. Bart calling it on the contact. Michael yeah. not contesting it. It's a pin. Bart said it was right in front of him, so he he felt it oh, was. Oh, he's right yeah. there. Right there. The man couldn't be any closer. Oh, it did look deceiving, though. Ringside seat from yeah, Bart Wood. Yep. And also, what I can tell you there is that Jerry Cataret was in terrible condition going into that round and yet still pulled off the win. Now that's going to test your nerves. Damn and Michael will be very aware of that. He, he'll be a little angry Lots at himself. Here, yeah, there really is. I mean, uh, a lot of tension. If you if, <laughs> if you look at the face Time. on Rebecca Todd. Time to the table. Yep. Bart summons she him up. Yeah, she's, right away, she's deeply concerned. Yep. Michael, I think water. less so, and he just needs to go yeah. to that experience well. We need towels over here to get that water up. We need towels you, over here. Our Great staff. match. One real. match. Two Unreal. absolute warriors here. I need all here. you motherfuckers shut up. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was talking to Cataret's corner there was Michael Todd. Tell the other staff to do it. <laughs> Monster Michael Todd. Here we go, Neil. Jerry Cataret. The Close heavyweight championship of Watch the your, world. Your Close your hands. Go. Big drive from Mike. Strap. We're going to the straps. No surprise. No shocker there. Yep. I uh, got it caught the first time. It's so fucking long. That strap has been the way of things all night, and because of the way that these arm wrestlers contest the match, that's no surprise. But what was a surprise was the fact that Jerry Cataret was allowed to do, able to do what he did. We look at the 
unbelievable concern yeah. on the face of Rebecca. Who said there's no drama in arm wrestling, <laughs> right? I mean, my goodness. Yeah, a little concern there. But Michael isn't. He's pretty calm. Yep, he's been. He, that's how he is. Yeah, he's been here before. It's yep. not his first rodeo. And, right. uh, why are we doing this with me way over here? You know, it's 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 match point in tennis. It's that we've all, that all the top guys in the game have been there. <laughs> right. Your nerves are jangling a little bit, but yep. you've got to dig. This is the test of a champion. This is the test of a champion, and you can't begrudge Jerry Cataret the success that he has had in this arm wrestling match because he has ground out those pins. Leads it 2-1, can win it. Big drive again victory. from Mike, but Mike didn't get anywhere near the purchase he wanted there. Now he's trying to climb. Little collections yeah. there. And we'll see the guys fall back into that familiar pattern of arm wrestling. Both men, absolute masters of what they do. And uh, Rebecca. You, can, you can see Rebecca there, there, but let's focus on what's going on at that arm wrestling yes. table, because 100%. that's where the action is. And it's what's going on in their mind that matters most. And Michael Todd now is trying to connect and stay on the A side. And that's what he needs to do. He needs to initiate. He needs to make sure that he runs the match a little more. Rather than allowing Jerry to make the running. Because Jerry won't back off. He's going to keep on coming and keep on coming. Clock is now at 50 seconds in this poll. Already had a 4 minute and 50 second poll in this Championship tilt, Neil. Big drive from Jerry there, no change. But uh, Michael Todd will be very, very conscious of Jerry's attack now. Going He's really it. going to the bank. Jerry is driving on hard there. Cataret smells blood in the water. Wow. And the gingerbread man is driving hard. Michael Todd Jerry, collects sir. his position. Must stay connected to that shoulder. And he will do. Watch for the press from Monster Michael Todd. He's setting it up. It's coming, and it's going to come hard. Jerry will be aware of that, and he'll try to shut down that light. But I'm not sure he can do so from there. But I've been wrong before. Jerry Cataret is a remarkable arm wrestler. This guy is the most underrated super heavyweight probably ever to do it. And I'll tell you what, he is earning a I lot of fans that. and a lot of respect right here. And oh, I'm sure yeah. he'll earn Hit. the respect to Michael fine. Todd. Coming up on two minutes now, we've reached it in this poll, Neil. An insane level of endurance shown from these arm wrestlers. Michael Todd and Jerry Cataret. Michael needs to be careful that he doesn't expose his shoulder and that Jerry doesn't jump on him himself. Jerry trying to keep his elbow down and it's coming up. Bart's all over it, but Jerry's good there. May have taken a foul, didn't do, collected himself. Michael still looking to transition around. If he can find that leverage point, we know what's coming. He'll jump on it and finish the match. Jerry Cadaret is giving no daylight. No. It's okay. constant side pressure, constant down pressure, constant commitment. I got one elbow on Jerry off the front. Cadaret needs to win now just to get the restart. Yeah. But there's a mental battle going on right now, and Michael Todd will not want to let that happen under any circumstances. On right. Jerry so what he'll far. look for is to make sure that he lets Jerry know that if it comes down to that dog fight, he's right there. Jerry. Losing his hand a little, and Michael yep. set his arm a little better. But his elbow is horribly tucked under, and that doesn't give him the opportunity to press from anywhere. He's got to wait, and he's got to move Jerry quite a long way. And Jerry is blocking with his body. He's blocking the angle there. Yep. He's blocking with bone, with sinew, with tendon. Cataract. It's hard to drive got one runner on you. Cataract on you. just says. Foul on him, it is a running foul on him. Jerry ain't backing off, Ben. No, Jerry he's not. is right. Look at him. I mean, he where has his mind gone right now? Jerry Cataret has gone to a very special place, and he could just be fatiguing Mike Todd here. And you can hear the crowd. Unreal. Again. Michael Todd trying to get behind his arm again and engage that shoulder, but we saw whoa, big drive from Mike. Yes. Huge drive. That was a We've got two fouls restart. What the fuck? Restart. Two fouls. You can't restart about a foot. Y'all both came up there. Put him back on. Two fouls. Two fouls. Restart. On no Cataret. Pass. Don't leave the table. Elbows down. Sorry. Don't leave the table. Let's go. 
Elbows down. So that one ends at 4.05. Uh, look, taking control of the match there. Yep. Both came up and quit pulling. He did it. But don't quit pulling. I didn't. You both did. I fucking did. You want to argue or you want to arm wrestle? Let's go. An absolute classic here for the hammer between Michael Todd and Jerry Cataract. So if he gets a pin now, you know what? Got two I think Michael Todd has a point there. I it's think that the foul from Jerry actually lifted Michael in the air. I don't think there was a, any kind of way that he could have kept his arm down because Jerry, like, yeah, there was yeah. very clear deal like Close between Jerry. And Jerry didn't intend yeah. to do that. Yeah. He just yeah. lost yeah. traction on his elbow Close and as he adjusted thumb. his body, it came up in the air. But you got to feel for Michael Close Todd there. He was almost in a position where he could transition. That's the win for Mike. It is. 2-2 two, two now. Yeah, not what we wanted to see, mate. Not what Michael will have wanted to see, but you know what? In these circumstances, he'll take it. Right, absolutely. He'll take it and take he'll anything it. now. Oh, my God. What it does do is set up a Titanic last round. So take me, take me. I wanted to get to this earlier. No, we got a little time this here. The tingling, same pain I had last year. You're in a, you're in a match like this. Yeah. I mean, take us in that pit. You've been there. You said you had a nine-minute pull, the longest in your career. What are these guys going through mentally, physically, and emotionally? They're going through a situation right now where all of the textbook stuff, you train hard, you grind hard, you try to prepare yourself to arm wrestle in a certain style, in a certain technique, in a certain way. All of that now is in the bin. It's in the trash can. Okay. It's all gone. You can't feel any of those key parameters. You can't feel your hand. Your wrist isn't doing what you want it to do. Your shoulder isn't performing. Your pec's blown out. Everything that you utilize to make your game come together isn't really functioning correctly. So right now, you're trying to look at things, analyze things, and go through the motions. It's like if a guy's coming back from a serious injury. Mm -hmm. They're, they know in their mind what they are supposed to do, but yes. their body isn't reacting. Right. They feel like they're running in quicksand. The, e the effort is there, but they're unable to make their body do what it wants to do. This is coming down. It's like the Rudyard Kipling poem, If. If you can I've read that. force yep. your heart yep. and mind and sinew, to Tell serve your, your turn your long this after they are done. Yeah. You will be the man, my son. Yeah. And right now, as these men window. step back to the table, this is a battle of wills like we have never seen never. before. That's good. And who better to contest it than these two outstanding warriors? It's going five. It's going the distance, folks. Two, two. We, for we the hammer. You know what, Ben? We talked about it all weekend on the lead up to this. Everyone's spoken about that one seven minute match and what that was like. This one is four more brutal. Yes. I agree with you. I would shock up if I was both here. You trying to go shops? Let's go and do this. The man who walks out of here tonight with the hammer deserves it and it will mean more than if they'd won it in any leg. other circumstance. Straight. Yep. Here we go, Neil. Close your thumbs. Close your hands. Go. Stop. You knew that was going to happen. Yes, sir. Comes to Michael Todd. Yep. How bad do you want to keep that hammer? Jerry Cataret. How bad do you want that hammer? I don't know. The answer to so that question. Here we go. Will be found out in the next few minutes. And it will last forever in the minds of everyone who saw it. And it will last a day longer in the minds of the men that contested that match. Huge, pivotal moment in the career of two magnificent arm wrestlers. Here's a try. Okay. Good. Come on, guys. Set your elbow. Drama. Oh. Drama. Dripping with drama. And passion shown at the table. The tenacity hey, of these arm wrestlers, the yeah. desire hey. of these arm wrestlers right is there for everyone to see. 
a championship contested in an ugly, brutal fashion, but rivetingly exciting, Ben. You said it'd be a war, and I think everyone expected that. It's been just that. It comes down to this. 2-2. Two, two. Next pin wins it and wins Close the hammer. You know, it's scary moments on the Close start of this match because neither man will react in the way look michael michael's hand wouldn't close there that's good. That's good. he was trying to close his hand and it just wouldn't react jerry cataret needs to keep Ooh. dangerous oh. signs there as mike goes for that little test yeah. and uh, he ran into a red brick wall jerry cataret just turning his body supinating that hand the pronation from Michael Todd, and he's looking for a little rest spot there, trying to base his hips and went for a mini transition there. He'll be a little nervous about doing that now because he knows that the last time he did, Jerry jumped on him. Jerry yeah, he did. Equal to it on the tricep, and this guy's endurance on that tricep is huge. Cataract oh, with there, Cataract going to the bank. Very, very dangerous times there. Michael stays composed, but Jerry. Smells blood in the water, he knows how close he is to that hammer now. He can almost close his hand around it, but Michael Todd reacts and finds something from somewhere very few men have ever been. Digging Eric deep. Cataret now, driving down with every fibre of his soul to claim what he believes is his. The heavyweight championship of the world has evaded the ginger dread man for so long. Could tonight be the night Watch when him. he claims I'm it? Not, I'm not talking to you. Michael Todd trying to squeak back, trying to hold that position when he finds you. Oh, so close to again. being exposed there. His shoulder not functioning correctly. Jerry trying to just get that bump surprise finish. Use the momentum. Wow! Very close. Michael Todd is in an oil. Michael looks for the press. Oh, incredible position. We're losing the strap. The strap has come off oh, the unreal. top of the pin there. Oh, Michael back. said he'd have to break his arm, and I thought it may go there. Oh. Wow. Over two minutes now, Neil. Ludicrous position. Michael has no purchase. No. He's lost the strap connection on his hand, and it's hard to pull from there. It is really hard to pull from there. What an unbelievable battle! Crazy. The ugliest of positions. Huge commitment. Michael Todd trying to hang in there, talking to Mark Wood, claiming that the elbow of Jerry Cataret was off the pad. His, his elbow is very, very close to the front there. It looks like it is off the pad. It is off the pad. It's on the money there. That looked to me like Jerry's elbow was off the front of the pad. No call, and the referees are right there. Nothing it's not yet. now. And Michael Todd hanging in there. Incredible circumstances. The try, concentrate on the match, Michael Todd. You cannot afford. It came off. The elbow called it. did come off there, and Michael needs the win to get the restart. The drama continues. And Michael Todd needs to stay in this match. What a ludicrous, there's a second foul. That's three. That's three. That's what Dave JP did against him. He did not put his elbow back down. That is a runner. I'm not, it's, you got, I'm not, we're not ending it like that. That's bullshit. That's a runner. Dave JP lost to Devin doing the same shit. Go to your corners, I want to look at the video. So Bart's going to look at it. Yeah, but yeah, you know what, Jerry, Cat that's a shame because Jerry was looking for a way out to get the restart there. Yeah. And you can understand why. No way. Yes, he did. Not the hammer match. Doesn't matter. You try to get out of it. You know. I'm done. Bullshit. Michael, Michael needs to just take a breath and calm down here. Jerry looking for a way out there. He uh, lifted his elbow up on purpose to try and get the restart. Give my fucking hammer. I won this shit. I mean, fuck it. You know I'm telling the truth. Second. Y'all go back and run back 504. Dave Tapey lost. Bart Wood looking at it. Michael Todd claiming victory. 
Let's look, let's look at this on the replay. Now, the thing to consider here is Jerry Canaret went on to the foul, okay? Now, once it was called, once the foul was called, he then felt that he lost purchase yeah. because he was talking to Bart and then watch him lift his elbow. He lifts his elbow up in the air, lose it there, loses that position. So they have summoned That's my bullshit. partner, Neil Pickup, over to the video review area. Unsportsmanlike, trying to hurt my shit. That's a runner. Dave lost that way. And I love this dude. I love this dude. So Neil is over there with him. Michael Todd continues to claim victory. Last push, Jerry. Last push. You can't have one set of rules for one guy and a different set of rules for somebody else. Two fouls on the board on Cataret now. I don't care. I don't care. I'm as done. they continue to I'm look right. at it. There's Neil over there with Bart. Everyone huddled around over there. I did not foul. I didn't foul. He Cataret. Did. So he's a, it's a runner. Catching yeah, his breath, getting there. a little wind, hoping this thing isn't no over. No, I no. For him. Michael Todd now going over to talk to Bart. I'm injured. And Neil. <sighs> now listen, you cannot have one set of rules for Devin and a different set of rules for me. My elbow is on the pad. I tell you what, what do you want? Give me girth. Are we all going girth? I'm not pulling again. I'm not pulling again. You, you this no fucking way. His elbow came off the pad. Mine was still on the pad, and he did not put it back on. That is a runner. That's three fouls. I win. Oh, you know what this means? You, they lost to Devin Laird the He's same way. So it's got 97 got, million views. Hey, hey, now Devin Laird in there. Because I'll be whining all I want. Hey, what, be, wait, be professional about this. And speak to us and not to the crowd. All right? Hey, Calm down. 97 million views. Watch De Dave Chase lift his elbow up. 97 million views. Watch Dave Chase lift his elbow up and lose. All right, well, but I would not want, want to be making this whoa. decision right now. I don't, I don't need shit. I won. This ain't the time to be all sportsmen. It's a, it's a rule. Was I on the table? Was I on the king's move? No, I was up here the whole damn time. That's the rule. I run it all I want. So the huddle, the conversation continues on. In the fifth pull of the night, Michael Todd feeling that he's won it on fouls. Neil's making his way back over here to our broadcast position. We'll certainly get the word from him unless Bart Wood delivers it before that. Okay, here we go. Here's what we have. We already had Jerry on one foul. He lifted his arm again, two fouls. Did not put it back on, so you would get a third foul. You didn't make an attempt to get it back on. I did pull it back on. Oh, you did? No, you did not. Go look yeah. at the film. Look at the film. We I did a bunch of, we did. We I did. I pulled it back. I most certainly pulled it back. Look at the film. I don't care if you have Look at the film. I got that. Jerry, look at the film. You're the one that told me to pull it. Jerry. Like the yeah. fucking strap was undone. The strap was undone. I know the strap was. He told me just. Pull. I know. I know. So trying to pull through. I know. I know. I you had to pull it back. You always got to continue on. trying. Watch. I put my elbow back on the pad. I understand that, but you can't. But you look at the film. We just did. Look at the video. That, that's. Just a, look at the video. But you we looked just at the video. Did, we did a bunch of times. We just did a bunch of times. And I put my elbow back on the pad. You li lifted it up and did not put an attempt to get it back on the pad. I did. I pulled it back. All right, Neil has <laughs> made. Look at it. His way you back over. Once he gets his headset back on, he'll tell us. The strap came undone. I know it did. So if the strap came undone, it's faulty equipment. It's not my fault. What went on over there at the review? Neil? It's going to be me. That's it, gentlemen. That's it. Michael Todd retains the hammer. They call the, the third most power. important.
You know what? I'm very, very disappointed to see that end that way. I know. It is I think everyone is. Because that was a wonderful match. To see it end on fouls is bitterly disappointing, to say the least. Yeah. Both these men left it all on the table. There was nothing left for either one. The issue there is that the foul was called. We can't hear what's being said down there, but there's a foul called. He then lifted his elbow up off the pad and would not put the elbow down. The match was stopped. Michael has the opportunity there. There's not, there's, the rule is clear. You did not put your elbow right. down. It's a horrible way to lose, yep. but you can't run out of a match. It's not possible. I know, I know, yep. I know, I know, I know, I know. The strap I came undone. Take this shit from me. That, that is a valid point. As Jerry said, the strap came undone, but unfortunately that is not in the rules. There's nothing you can do to legislate to for no, the strap coming yeah, undone. Yeah, I'll say something, whatever, but... Well, what an ending. A great what you shame. said was an amazing Incredible match. Incredible battle. And let's get down to Jason, who's with Jerry Cataract. Jerry, I, it's hard to even put into words what just took place here tonight. But you left it all on the table. You had the entire crowd chanting your name. What's going through your mind right now? Shitty way to end. You know, I mean, strap comes undone. You can't do shit, you know? So I tried to slip through the straps because the strap was already out. So definitely, definitely a controversial way to end this season. But now you and Michael are one and one. Is this going to fuel you moving forward and how? Yeah, I guess I'll train for the next one. <laughs> Everyone, let's give it up one time for Big Daddy Jerry Cataract. And you said you wanted to win that way. I said, do you want to win like that? You said, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I know. I had no good gas left then either. I understand. You know? All right. I don't want to do that. Michael Todd, you just said to Jerry last year, you took on Jerry Cataract, and he won. You fouled out. This year, you win as he fouls out. Just remember, I pinned him twice, though. Yeah, he did get two pins. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. Yeah. We only got one. That dude's awesome. <laughs> that dude's awesome. Yeah. I don't care if you hate me. I don't care if you hate me. That match was a war. We were both in this thing for everything it's worth. Let me tell you the problem. He had Devin Laird in his corner telling his ass to foul. That's what happens. Lift your elbow up and get the foul. Don't listen to that dude. Well, Michael, it looks like you're, you're finding a lot of rivals here. Oh, God. Man, let me tell you, I don't ever want to pull that guy again. My hand hurt again. It hurt again the first match. I was in perfect position. No, second match. He kicked my ass the first match. I didn't like that one. The second match, I was in that shit perfect. Looked amazing. Y'all see that shit? I looked awesome. And then something happened, and I was in a world of trouble. Didn't like that either. But fortunately, I was able to transition around and get the press. Or maybe foul. I don't even remember what happened. All I know is I was done. As soon as he didn't put his elbow back down, and 97 million people on Facebook watch Dave Chafee lose that way, I'm taking my hammer and leaving. Well, a lot of people are definitely going to be talking about this match oh, no, for some time to come. I was hated before. I'm going to really be hated now. But I'm going to embrace all that shit. Woo! What's your statement? What do you, what do you want to say to the haters? What, what do you want to say, you and Rebecca, are having a moment <laughs> celebrating? Congratulations. You are still on that our note, champion. One second, one second. I have the best wife in the world. She just had this ring made for me. Monster Michael Todd, arm wrestling world champion. There's the WAL hammer. There's PAL, NAL, arm wars, UAL, I've won it all. And it's staying in Arkansas, baby. All right, let's give it up for the monster Michael Todd. The hammer is staying in Arkansas. Ben, Neil. Thank you, Jason. Great work down there by you and Justin all night long as we welcome you back up to our office. Neil, everyone's going to be talking about this. I'm sure Facebook is blowing up. No one wants to see it end this way, but it did. Oh, terrible way to see a match of that magnitude uh, that was contested with that kind of uh, desire and ferocity. Terrible way for it to end. Both men couldn't have tried harder.
the thing I, I would say is you've got to look inside yourself and not look for a way out of an arm wrestling match. There is no way out of an arm wrestling match when you lift your elbow up and keep it up. You've got to keep it down. Yep. The guys know that. They walk the line. And tonight, it ended in disappointment for everyone. I don't think anybody wanted to see that conclusion to what was otherwise a magnificent match. In a magnificent year of the WAL here in 2019, our championship night, it ends with Michael Todd, the monster, retaining the hammer. That's it for WAL 506 in the World Arm Wrestling League Supermatch Series 2019 from the arena at Turner Studios here in Atlanta. Battles were fought, scores were settled. Some head home with a fistful of cash and some with new hardware, while others leave seeking to come back bigger and better next season. But for now, we end the 2019 season saying thanks so much for watching and supporting the WAL. For all of our outstanding crew, my broadcast partner tonight, Neil Pickup, and Max Taubin throughout the year, Jason Zone Fisher, Justin Roberts, Steve Kaplan, Warren Pick, everyone involved. My name is Ben Holden. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in 2020.